We're watching Shoot Against Bluster, right? Oh, yes. Okay. And we're live. I wish good things to you who's watching this. I am Alexi, and I need to still sort out some tef technical difficulties. That's why we are late. So our intro today is going to be very, very short. But first of all, I need to introduce to you my special guest, Captain of Team Mexico, Elias Mochan, also known with the street name Complex V and H. And also, uh, Elias is playing, is one of the favorites, I'd say, in his group in the Scarcasson Champion League. But today, neither I or Elias are playing. We will be bringing you three matches. Hi, Elias. It's awesome to have you here on the stream. Hi, Alexi. Thanks for having me. Uh, Alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hi, Nalaheim. Hi, Crafty Rap. Hi, Glovier. Hi, Self Evident. Great to see already so many of you in the chat, uh, even a few minutes before the game. Hi, Fabio. Uh, so, you can see on the screen the three matches that we are going to have. Uh, first of all, uh, the encounter between Shud and Bluste. Uh, Shud is a well-known Japanese player who was one of the top scorers in the 2023 World Team Carcassonne Online Championship. Bluste is Vladimir Vlaich, uh, the uh, reigning Croatian national champion. He participated in the world team, in the world, not team, but regular world championship in person in Germany, re um, representing Croatia. Uh, then we're going to watch world number four, an ex exceptionally strong player with a screen name Self-Evident 2, who will be competing against uh, another member from Team Japan with a screen name EQ, and at the end, uh, Sunny369 from Hong Kong, uh, also from Hong Kong's national team, will be competing against the 2023 silver medalist of the Mind Sports Olympiad, Afonso Kalaku, with a screen name Osnofac. So before we go to the matches, we still have two minutes before we start. Let's just have a look at the tournament situation real quick in different groups. So we can see, by the way, uh, this this is Group A. So Group A is uh, not playing today, at least as far as I know. But this is a group where Elias is. Um, so you're currently in second place. Yep. How do you feel about your prospect of qualifying for the playoffs? Um good I, I i think i'm in a good position right now i'm missing my games against uh bob Ondi from iceland and norbert from latvia mm -hmm. uh, i know norbert can be a tough opponent but i think even if i lose both games i still have a chance uh oh. well no not both if i lose one of the games i still have a chance so uh I hope to be okay. I'm gonna still try to win both games, but well, in that case, and by the way, for our viewers, I might stream one of those games. I will be trying to uh, stream the encounter between Norbert and Elias. That will be next week. Anyway, for this week, we can no. Say, well, uh, hmm? I'm playing Bob on the next week. I'm ah, playing Norbert okay. last week. Yeah. So I guess we will need to be a bit, a bit more patient. Uh, <laughs> hi, Ludo. <laughs> uh, all right, so Group B, uh, I'm doing pretty well so far in three out of three. Still haven't played the 2017 World Champion with the screen name uh, UY Scooty, but so far things have been going relatively well. Group C, as expected, the currently the highest rated player on board game arena, Nallerheim, is in first place but the real battle will be over here and this is where our intention will be drawn here so mm, the player with screen name should and the player with screen name blows they all have one win each so there really has not been much croatian carcasson on the scene there might be a team from croatia this season at the world team carcasson champ world championship world team carcasson online championship 2024 too many words in the title of the <laughs> tournament oh well, anyway so um um shoot is of course is a very known player but blusta has been progressing in the ratings very very fast i've seen them rated 650 at the very least i wonder if they crossed the threshold yet and uh they have an interesting balanced style of play with um like a, a, a balanced style of play between blocking and point scoring. And um, that will be quite interesting to observe. So, Elias, do you have experience playing either of these players? And uh, what do you make of 
them and what do you make of the prospects uh for this yeah i i don't think i've played blueste before um he i i know he was the the creation champion and um i did some digging of of his elo and stuff before the world championship and i think he has uh written a lot in in these last months but, uh i played shoot many times and he's a very tough opponent I, I think i have a losing record against him i've win a few times but uh yeah he he's very tough uh very creative uh, so I, I think should should be the favorite but yeah uh, um, anything can happen, I think. This is very interesting because as you speak, they've already started playing a little bit, so maybe one minute <laughs> ahead of time. But um, they have almost identical ratings. It's around 640. So I've opened the game. Blue stay here playing with the yellow meeples should playing with the red meeples. Cre the Croatian player has already made the correct meeple color choice, so that's a little win for them. And I would say that... My money is actually on the Croatian player this time. It's just intuition, or maybe just the fact that they drew, drew these two adjacent monasteries early in the game, which are a big power. So now, of course, they are 0 0 on the scoreboard. But these monasteries are already given yellow seven points, and there are just so many squares that can easily be built up. Red, of yeah. course, here attempted uh. to block this monastery, but. We will see uh, if um, red, if yellow gets a tile that fits into this place. Yellow might even getting both of these meeples back into his hand. On the other hand, um, if shoot gets a triple city, it can be a double block on the monastery plus city. We'll oh, see. Oh, like triple city over here, you mean? Uh, on the left, right? Yeah. But here's, here's something interesting. So uh, as you've been saying this, Should immediately took a city cap and started attacking this city over here. So and now, now he needs a triple yeah, city in another place. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So now Red is trying to take over the city over here. And Red will need a triple city tile to fit into this square. So Red won't really have enough time to block this square. Red is, of course, trying to do that. So Red drew a curve put it over here at the bottom and is now trying to kind of create some sort of vulnerabilities here and at the same time vulnerabilities here. And if red manages to draw a bunch of triple cities, let's say red first of all finishes here, draws a city cap, gets like 16 points on the scoreboard, then red draws another triple city, puts it here, and then red now can commit two of these squares to starting tiles just to make sure that um, it is harder for yellow to get his meeple back. In the meantime, it is yellow who draws triple city tiles and uses it as a way to hinder the development of this red city at the top. But on the other hand, red is drawing the starting tile. So red just drew the tile that yellow really, really needed over here in this square. So both opponents are drawing each other's tiles. Yeah, uh, um, I think it's uh, maybe Blue State will want to defend it indirectly. Yeah, because uh, the the problem with attacking with the straight line here is that the, the indirect defense is stronger because the second square is kind of protected. Yeah, so this Luster is can complete the defense now. Uh, let's see if he does it. Because if, if he puts something on top of, of shoot style, uh, then the monasteries are not blockable from that side. I mean, he puts it on the right. So I think, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a great idea with the indirect defense. So Yellow managed to play a strong move, placing a tile over here, making it sure that it is harder for Red to place a tile over here that would block all these monasteries. But now, in addition, what yellow can do, yellow can go over here in such a way, facing this triangle to the right, that the only tiles that fit into these two squares are the ones that complete the two monasteries and also complete an eight-point city in the process. 
but he chooses not to do that and honestly maybe i rather like that because his idea is he just wants to get shield right he just wants to use this tile as a four point tile try to get one meeple back be okay with loss of two meeples which is probably something that is going to happen and um i think he has reasons for this so should now, of course, draws a good tile and blocks his monasteries. Not, neither of these two meeples are going to come back. However, should it was forced to use a relatively valuable tile to do that, that's a city cap. These two monasteries with blocked meeples will still give yellow points. And I assume that yellow's idea here in choosing not to defend this monastery properly uh, was the fact that the monasteries were still vulnerable from the other side and that one of the uh, starting tiles, one of the tiles that would have fit into this square um, that was already drawn, and so all these factors combined um, made yellow go YOLO and just sacrifice these two meeples, essentially. You looked surprised about yellow's move here, Elias. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't love it. Um, I, I see the point. He, he wants to block Shoot City, but uh, the thing is, now Shoot can get this road when he expands his city. Oh, you're talking about this move over here. Yeah, so this is... A... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you seem to be surprised about a lot of Yellow's moves. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, the, the other one, I think it's good. Um, I, I thought the fending was okay. Oh, and he blocks successfully now. Yeah, so this meeple by red is completely deceased. So yellow with a sequence of three curves over here was able to completely kill off this meeple. So yellow is getting something in return. Yeah, and he also draws a good tile now. Um, he has many interesting options. But I think the most important thing is that Red is not getting that tile. Right, so Red is kind of st starts to run out out of tiles that fits into this square. There's still five remaining, but after each of them, as Crafty Raph pointing in the chat, after each of them, so let's say if Red like connects to the city, Yellow will still have a chance to attack from this side. Uh, and maybe salvage the points from this city. In the meantime, uh, Red is now trying to block Yellow City here at the bottom. So both players are drawing roads, exchange kind of blocks, defenses, blocks, defenses. So this square now here is only slightly restricted. Uh, and um, Yellow has a decent chance of completing this city. We'll now see what Yellow's going to do. So Yellow could add this tile over here, but I'm pretty sure Yellow's an experienced enough player not to do that. The move that I would expect is maybe starting a new city over here or over here at the very top, putting pressure a little yeah. bit on this road. Or maybe even going here on the right and starting a new city here and trying to do something about this square. What would you do here in this position as yellow, Elias? Yeah, I think I would place it um, probably on the top right, trying to attack... Uh, yeah, I, I would try to attack the road instead of the city, but the, I think that one is good as well. I prefer I prefer the move that you would have played, Elias, and I'll tell you why. When you attack a city like this, if your opponent draws a, a triple city tile immediately, for example, puts it over here, then what you've done as yellow is you've actually restricted the square that you need for re-attacking the city. Yeah. And also, what what red what yellow has done is yellow pretty much gave yellow a chance to use a tile for defending this square actually it's it's a really really easy square to defend so even though this attack looks scary it really isn't so we might have seen the first substantial misstep from the croatian player but let's see if it works out because the thing that i'm thinking right now right um even though yellow's getting blocked red is spending lots of valuable tile on blocking for example monastery like yellow, uh, red sacrificed four points essentially over here, and possibly even more points if red draws a road end in the future, takes like a four point road over here. So there's some opportunity cost involved with this move. And this makes me think that even if red finishes the city, yellow is going to be 
quite in a good position simply because he has points elsewhere. For example, Yellow has just completed this 12-point city with two city caps, got a couple of meeples back, and Yellow is doing quite well, okay. What, what do you think about this last move by Red? Because he could have pre-closed his other city, in, uh, which was a little bit more restricted. I think I like this move because it's not just about pre-closing, it's also about preventing a yellow from attacking. And it, and Red's idea here was the fact that there's still three Doritos with the road. And there was a threat that yellow might draw a Dorito with the road and place it over here like this, uh, block course, the yeah. city uh, together with his monasteries, which are already blocked. So it's sort of like a kamikaze move. You know, these two meeples are already dead and we're going to take down uh, our opponent's meeple. And this is exactly the kind of thing that Red has now prevented. And I assume that later on, Red is going to try and pre-close the city as Elias suggested, just with a uh, different tile. And, and, and this one is pretty interesting because now if Red wants to run away from from yellow's attack which he doesn't he would have uh, run into a trap on the left exactly yeah so now this is a if if red were to place the dorito tile over here then if yellow drew another dorito yellow could have killed off red's meeple like this which is exactly why red doesn't do that and start a new city but it also has a cost because if yellow draws some sort of not necessarily a dorito tile but imagine simply just a simp a city cap then, by finishing one city, yellow will be instantly restricting two cities of red. Something that red seems to be fine with. Red keeps making very conservative moves, so red uses a road end to end his loop. Yeah. As opposed to taking two points somewhere here, or maybe three points somewhere here. So, let's see if sacrificing these little points will change the outcome of the game. Also now we see that yellow scored a four points for the road. The same four points that red sacrificed earlier on by defending his city and not using this monastery as a quick point tile. So yellow is doing pretty well here. I was going to say until red finished a juicy 12 point city at the same time restricting the city cap of Blusta, which of course now is getting a boost from this juicy four points extend yeah, child the thing is red keeps getting tiles that are good for his other city but there's other stuff to do and he cannot close his city uh, again he will not close his city on the left because he has to close the one on the right <laughs> <laughs> yes but honestly he probably doesn't even need to close his city on the left he's just happy like if he draws the triple city tile to have eight points in that city completely blocked because look at this i mean shoot is drawing quite a lot of city caps and um, this all adds up and also now um red is attacking another city and maybe if red draws a triple city tile red might not even put it over here red's gonna like put it over here and then the dorito over here and try to eat up this city piece yeah <laughs> so after I'm... this exchange i mean um I like reds more in this position. What about you, Elias? Yeah, I, I think so too. Still, Bluste has the two monasteries for 17 points. But uh, yeah, red is looking better and better. I think he will now restrict uh, the yellow road because he doesn't want that to close <coughs> as a six-point loop. Ooh. But then this also pre-creates another road rebuild. Yeah, I was considering even taking that other <coughs> road, but uh, I don't know. I Maybe it's a it. bit vulnerable. I like it. I still like it. Vulner like vulnerable, schmulnerable. It's not, I mean, um, the only way to really bother this road is to draw a curve and put it over here. But the thing is um, that yellow needs another curve over here. <laughs> to make sure that he continues his road hmm. properly without getting blocked. This move is an interesting move, so I guess it restricts the city, but it really just prevents yellow from re-attacking it. It also sort of kind of prevents yellow from blocking it, but not really. 
it it sort of prevents yellow from getting his own ring in case he gets lucky and gets all the triple cities which he has done so far <laughs> actually yeah it's an interesting point so imagine so this is the penultimate triple city tile there's still one more in the deck but if this were the last one yellow could say haha you're not getting anything in this square and now yellow could place could have placed it over here and then got in a quadruple city tile and place it over here and grown like a huge eight point ruin over here with just one meeple whereas red is trapped with just five points with two meeples so, but Red drew another triple city tile for over here, and now Red is threatening to take over oh. this city, which for sure would be game winning. And there's still one, two, three, four, five, five Dorito tiles remaining. It seems like almost a sure bet that Red will manage to take over the city. And what does she do is... about this? This is an ambitious move by by yellow, by the way. This um, three point road because we are running out of uh, crossroads. All right. So, uh, okay, red finally pre finishes that city. Okay, yeah. now now red is looking just great. Probably a farmer as well. Well, n no need, but it's just... Yeah. The, the thing with cities, like, they're such a powerful feature because you get your meeples back instantly. And then, th and then like, how does yellow come back from this? Because now he needs to build something that not only gives him points, but also gives him meeples back. So, I mean, yellow, of course, could take Oof, a nine point I, field or I something. I think yellow should have taken his road back because he's... he's um lacking meeples and there are three nine point fields so he may take one but should is gonna take the other two uh completely agree so, so this actually was no urgency in taking this field because there are two nine point fields and you can always uh take the second field if your opponent doesn't take the first field well uh but what do we know so okay. i assume that <laughs> Uh, R Yellow has a deal with the board game arena developers, knew that he's going to draw a curve in the next uh, turn, and got his meeple back. Not that it is going to help him that much, because in order to win, Yellow first of all would need to draw this triple city tile, just so that Red doesn't draw it and doesn't finish yet another city, and then Yellow would need to find a good use for this triple city tile, maybe over here, drop a farmer, connect to this nine point field, and then Yellow would need to finish this city to get a meeple back, and then like Yellow would need to get a, I don't know, a straight line, drop a farmer, get a curve, take over this nine point field, take a straight line, take like a five point road like this, but there's simply not enough tiles to do that. Yeah, should could have uh, blocked the road instead of, of getting a farmer. I don't know if maybe he considered that uh, it was too important to get that field before yellow did, but yellow had only one maple, so I think maybe blocking was okay at that moment. I like should moves, like a 9 point field is a 9 point field and you definitely don't want to give your opponent easy 18 points with, with two meeples and even though a blue still was short on meeples, he still has an option to get a city cap, get 6 points on the scoreboard, get a meeple back, so this wasn't his last usable meeple really. We have increased viewership which is great, alright we have uh, fans for Croatia, um, hi Hannah, hi Sergey, hi Nico. Um, <laughs> hi, Chris. If you're new here, I want to remind you that we will be streaming Carcassonne Champion League match regularly throughout the next few weeks. So, if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel. We're pretty close to hitting an important milestone of a thousand subscribers, which I am excited about should start a new city at the same time harassing yellow city over here a little bit crafty is saying go for the five point road maybe presuming a move over here like this if you take uh if a yellow meeples this road if are there is there... enough 
But there are straight lines. Yeah, there are actually three straight lines remaining. One, okay. two, three, four, five. Meaning that there are still three straight lines in the deck. And if one goes over here, then these are easy uh, five points. And another yellow. one I like is taking the nine point fields, but trying to prevent your own fields from merging. Oh, it's six points, sorry. Yeah. It doesn't seem uh, to seem like a yeah. worthwhile investment. I assume the move that you're suggesting was going like this. With the triangle faced that way so that uh, basically yellow is able to score twice for these cities with two different farmers. I assume like to have any yeah. chances, aggressive scoring is completely essential. Because the idea with a five-point road is not only do you get the five-point roads, but you get a meeple back probably on the next move. Uh, or very very soon and then you get to use this meeple elsewhere yeah yeah the the five point run seems like the way to go here nalerheim is pointing in the chat uh that not only does this create a five point road uh this potential move that i'm pretty sure the creation player is going to play but he doesn't nope. he decides to protect his city instead uh, but the idea was that this move would have also create an additional um, attacking platform for the field. Yeah. yeah, look at this. Just as Bluster was about to finish a city, uh, should mepled a six-point monastery. So Bluster needs to come up with something else. Maybe like going over here, dropping a Desperation Farmer. Is it time? Possibly. Actually, are Where's there the... even curves remaining? I can see daggers. Uh, the, I think there are like two curves left. Um, the, there were a lot of curves in a row in the middle game. Mm -hmm. Which both players used for blocking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, interest. Shoot drops his last meeple, but he gets one back immediately. Yeah, these, these two monasteries are just so powerful. Like, red is going to end up with a finished monastery, probably. Oh, and look at this. And now, should I'm pretty sure it's going to go over here and meeple this road. Like, that's just what he's going to do. Leaving the cap in his field. Exactly, yeah. And the idea is that there's still one more cap left, I think, for him to finish a city. There's still three straight roads remaining to put over here. And there's still the magical tile that fits into this square that would give red two meeples back and a bajillion points. So if red goes over here, that's like a pretty much a sure bet that he's going to get a lot of points and a meeple back on his next move. Yeah, um... I also like just getting one point in the monastery and and like dropping a farmer later when you close something in that field. Yeah, but like but all of that really maybe it's a bit conservative. Yeah, it's it's a sort of yeah. conservative. I mean, one point is one point. Like it's not bad or anything, but um, it just seems that red knows that he'll be winning no matter what he's just trying to calculate are there any remote chances that yellow could somehow i don't know take over this nine point field with two meeples and equalize the game like this it doesn't seem so well actually wait a second so red has these two monasteries over here which are compensated by these two monasteries over here and there's an 18 point difference on the scoreboard, but if red were to somehow, if yellow were to somehow oh, like look at go that. over here. <laughs> it, yellow is almost forced to share the city, but there are, just because of this triple city, he's safe. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we we'll uh... see a meeple here. Yeah, this is just, um, well, it's very precise play from from should trying to connect to the city simply preventing yellow from finishing his city like that that's all what it is it's just yeah. sabotage that he's doing at this point hi vinny hi vika 
No, this is a harder tile to play for for shoot because I, I the best move I see is putting it in the city. Oh, no, not that one. In the four point city that was just created, just to no, forget it. That was a bad move. <laughs> I, I I know I know what you mean, but 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 yes. Uh... <laughs> But, but here's the interesting thing is like, I'm not sure even from a tournament strategy standpoint, like Red should be thinking that much because as a reminder to our viewers, by the way, I didn't say that explicitly at the start, all matches that we're watching here are best of three format. This is the first match. So this victory for sure will not be enough. You will need to win one more game in order to win this match. And so at some point, if you know that the end game is going too well, the best move is to save mental energy and just play a move instead of being super precise and playing like the move that gives you the most points it doesn't matter that much if uh red wins with a 10 point difference or a 20 point difference as long as red red makes sure that he actually wins yeah um I, I don't see any outside chance here for Blue Stay. Uh, he can take a long road. He can take a short road, but the thing is, if you try to get the five-point road, when you close it, you cannot take anything. So... Yeah, I think that makes a little bit more sense. Certainly the highest scoring move on the board. He takes a five point road, gives um, Red, of course, a one monastery point, but this makes it a net three point move. No, it's not a three point move. Unless we miscounted, should we close the city? So I think Bluste should take the field now, take a six point field, which is three points now, but. It's a 50 50, so. Oh, oh! It's a fifty-fifty. I, I thought I thought should had um, should yeah, have the last tile. But... but this was still actually quite a serious mistake here by Yellow because Yellow could have prevented Red from getting two points here. Yellow simply should have placed this yeah. tile over here. Now this is not going to matter necessarily, but. Um... We do seem here that it did seem that the Japanese player was more precise and uh, we were kind of focused a little bit on which tiles are drawn and uh, and some blocking decisions made early on, but in the end game, like with the last 20 tiles, it seemed to me that Red had full control of what's going on and these cities over here, for example this one, that looked quite lucky and these monasteries, they looked lucky, but really they were actually were not at all that unlikely, so it seems that... Um, Red just really showed a strong performance here. Only plus 12, which, by the way, would have been plus 10 with precise play from the Croatian player. So it, it's not like a super imbalanced uh, match. And um, so far, the more experienced player wins, but I expect a very hard fight in the next one. With this win, the Japanese player crosses the 6 50 rating threshold. Let's see how the creation responds. By the way, pretty neat profile picture, I have to say. I assume oh, the, the uh, creation the logo for the national team. Probably, yeah. Uh... The checkered uniform, uh, obviously from the coat of arms from the Croatian flag. And uh, this is also the same type of checkered uniform that Croatian football players wear. So that's quite nice. So the game has started and now the Croatian player with the yellow meeples has the starting player advantage. He started a... Oh no, he doesn't actually. Uh, it is the Japanese player who has the starting player advantage. He now... Started a city, Bluste started the road, the Japanese player started another city, and Bluste started another city. The Japanese player is the first on the scoreboard, scoring four points and starting yet another city. So slightly more city tiles for red over here. Oh. Now Bluste starts. Will he meeple the road? Meeple the road. I think he will take the city, but 
Oh, he takes the field. Okay. Actually, I probably like the city. Yeah, just to... Yeah, yeah it's fine. It's fine. Field is good. Because I think the main idea is that um, Red cannot meeple this road due to the vulnerability of this tile. Yeah. Oh, I'm not a fan of this orientation, but still, four points are four points. And I'll explain why in a second. Yes. Yeah, uh, that's because a of problem. this. <laughs> yeah. He will so... defend and make two points and get the road points. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So maybe it's a slight misstep here from the Croatian player for the variety of reasons. I mean, he takes the score point, the four points, and there's still a 75% chance of this red meeple getting blocked. But the problem is that is after this defense, if red gets a tile that fits over here, not only will he get eight point city, eight points for the city that, and, and meeple back, he will also get three points for this extra road, which was kind of donated to him by red. And also, another issue with this move over here is that it makes the field a little bit shorter, which seems that like it doesn't matter that now, but it but it could matter later down the road because if I don't I don't like that one by shoot, but but uh, yeah. The, so the the problem with shoot moves is that now it's bad to take the city. It was he was in a position that it was good to take the city. And now he has to take it, but it now it now we defends. Exactly. Yeah. So the, the the point with this move earlier is that it's 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 actually a well known mistake. Like it's just not the pre most precise way to try and block this meeple. So even though blocking this yellow's meeple is a great idea, which Red absolutely should pursue, there's something about Carcassonne that you should wait for the right tile in order to do something like this. Also, not a huge fan of this move as well. So, like, the Japanese player is going for these field fights. And I would say that he's going for them whilst he's not prepared. Like, he has two meeples here, kind of trapped for a long time. And um, if I were red, I would definitely think twice before making big fields whilst being at a meeple disadvantage. And he now needs to worry even more because yellow draws a tile that red needed over here. Now there's a 50% chance that this red meeple is never coming back. So if I'm the Japanese player, I am sweating. Yeah. Um... I don't know. He, I, it, it, it was a hard tile, the, those... Um orthogonal caps because I don't think there was a much better placement at the moment uh, there, there was if you ask me like over here maybe trying to attack this road a little bit but what's done is done and uh, red just like in the previous game also tries to get to make some blocking moves so now he's trying to yeah, and, and he would use a better. monastery for defense, probably. That would be a mistake. Like, don't. And this is like not even a real defense. Don't do it. But I mean, I... like the the, the the play with the red meeples is too experienced to do this. I mean, the move is over here and meeple the monastery. Like, there isn't anything that I see. Yeah, it's it's just a mistake. Like. Uh, because the main idea is, of course, it looks very nice that you see Bluesten now drew this straight line that would have fit over here. And so Red protected his meeple, but only temporarily. Because there's still seven curved hmm. tiles that Red can use in order to block, uh, that Yellow can use in order to block this square. Well, but he misses uh, two straight lines. He he's neglecting his road quite a bit, uh, and oh, th should th can was, block it uh, now. Yeah, that was. Um, I'm going to say like this definitely has to be a massive misstep by by Yellow. This was a good move. I really like the, what what Yellow did. Yellow's prioritization because the idea was that Yellow wants to prevent Red from finishing a city and dropping a farmer. But this move essentially does nothing. It just creates a blocking platform, sort of, kind of. I mean, uh, I'm also so surprised at... Sh oh, this is an interesting move. So Should is now not blocking this road. He's it's trying to save his city while uh, making the yellow city harder to close. No. Here, yeah, yeah I, I was gonna say this. I I love this move by by Yellow. Yeah, excellent. He, he could have played a, a farmer there, but 
And I love a farmer there, absolutely. Like over here, and then to grab one of the seven curves and try to connect into the field. The thing with a farmer is that if if shoot gets the tap with the, the, the dagger, then the farmer gets blocked. Oh, that's a great point, actually. Well, there's still an opportunity to reconnect through the monastery with the right, but it's a bit of a tall order. So, Blust is now getting a triangle tile. Let's see what he does with it. He could uh, continue his city, which is what I would do, but I have a feeling that instead he's going to go over here and try and make a blocking attempt. Certainly, we see a lot of blocking from both sides, definitely much more than I would expect. Even from the Japanese player, like Japanese players are typically aggressive point scorers, but maybe should study Blust and decided to adjust a little bit and, um, and block a little bit more. So... The Croatian player makes the... Will he drop a first. farmer or take the road? Yeah, take the road. <laughs> yeah, the road is better because the, the point of this road is not only because it's a free point road, but it, it protects yeah. the city indirectly because now Yellow is disincentivized of placing anything into this square, which in turn oh, would have... Just in time. <laughs> Uh, so, so I was going to say wh why I like this move with the Triple City with Road by Yellow is because uh, Red was trying to protect indirectly his city. If he puts something other than a road in that square, there's no tile that... Well, the only blocking tile would be a monastery maybe, which Luce should not use for blocking. But while placing it in this way, then... All the curves are blocking tiles. So he pre-blocked, uh, well, he defended the blocking square while getting two points. And now he successfully blocked the red meeple just in time. Yeah, and this is a great sequence because also pre-built pre this huge road that goes into his city. And there were still two, now still one tile that still fits into this square that if yellow gets, he gets to go over here and meeple this beautiful road. And on top of that, the way the way this city is built is very organic because there's still many big city tiles. There's still five triple cities. There's still a lot of Doritos. Uh, there's six Doritos in the road. And this city at the bottom is easily completable with a bunch of... Doritos kind of creating an expanded lip shaped city whilst yellow can use city caps for like something else so Even though red is ahead by 14 points I would argue that yellow has a great position here just because of potential to use pretty much any tile productively Yeah This is an extremely strong move by the Japanese player, starting a new city in such a way that pre-builds the six-point loop and makes it easier for him to finish a monastery in the future. The Croatian player proceeds with the plan of finishing uh, this city, which he will is actually most likely to succeed. Let's see how the Japanese player responds. He tries to create an attacking platform against the city. And nothing really that the Croatian player can do about it, because this defense with the monastery won't really do much. Maybe he can just simply go over here, add a point to his monastery. No really good place to meeple this monastery, and given the big field and some meeple issues from both sides, it's certainly a good idea to keep a meeple and try to fight for this 15-point field, which could turn into a much bigger field in the future. Let, let me ask you something. If you are red and you draw a uh, crossroads, would you take the road that's um, the pre-built road with uh, the yellow city, even though it's only a 50-50? Uh, that depends on the overall game situation. I might. I might. Yeah, like if I feel that I'm ahead, I actually might do that. If I'm behind, I'll just have to gamble for the 50-50. So yellow now successfully thwarted the development of, you know, red now successfully thwarted the development of yellow city. This is a beautiful move, makes sure that um, it is much harder for yellow to complete this city. Yellow now finishes his city, drew, draws a last remember, uh, remaining dagger, and meeples this beautiful eight point road. Even if this road gets blocked, it's already a worthwhile investment, but there is no guarantee that this 
road even will get blocked. Okay, now, what if we go over here and drop a farmer, not city? Yes, yes! Beautiful, efficient play. So this is... Yeah, just... I, I, I was a bit surprised by Red's move, by uh, putting the curve there, making his own city vulnerable. Yeah, I, I get it. So I, I think his idea is that he's okay with just finishing one of his uh, features, so he's okay with one of his two meeples blocked. Because he is a bit ahead on the scoreboard, like we can't take away that. But yeah, I true. like how the Croatian player combated this beautifully and efficiently, because the point is, this field is already worth six points, so this meeple is kind of a worthwhile investment as it is. And... Um, Oh, if... Yellow will finish his road finally. He should. <laughs> he really should. Yeah, that, just... that road has been there for such a long time. It feels like both players forgot about it. Oh, look at that. I think <laughs> both players forgot that? about it. Why would you I, do I that? I think he just forgot about his other road. He, I really he think just... so. Because, yeah, but this is such a serious mistake by Yellow, because the main idea, there's only one starting tile remaining. And if you're placing a move like this, this is saying that you draw a starting tile, that you're hoping to draw a starting tile. But if, as Yellow, you're going to draw a starting tile, you're already going to benefit from Red not drawing it. So, I mean, this, this is a really serious oversight, and Elias, I think this is literally an oversight. I think really both sides just forgot that Yellow has a road over here. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, Bluster now should go over here and create a Sophie's Choice block. This is a strong move. Yeah. Because now, uh, first of all, this prevents uh, Red from getting a Meeple back instantly, and also this is make sure that Yellow no, that red needs the starting tile in two of these spots simultaneously, which means that when and if red draws this tile, there will be a Sophie's choice. Which meeple do you save? This one or this one? But you can't save both. Look at this. In the meantime, the yellow's ruin at the bottom is gaining extra points and non-zero chances of completion. So as Bluster, yeah. well, you probably as Bluster just go over here, blocking this city. Although, do you really need to block this city? I'm not sure. Maybe you just go over here and try to finish this city at the bottom. And maybe you are completely okay with keeping this square open because if red draws a city cap, then this would bring yellow into the field. That's why this farmer was such a strong move. Yeah, I, I, I don't think yellow will block the, uh, the city, but uh, maybe he will restrict the other city. I don't know. I, I think. Yeah, he restricts the other city. And and now Red has an interesting choice because uh, it looks enticing to close your restricted city, but doing this with a farmer is also very good. In the meantime, I'm just going to get the critical tile graphic up because a lot in this game will depend on who is going to draw the starting tile. If red draws the starting tile, red gets his meeple back over here. If yellow draws the starting tile, then yellow gets his meeple back over here. In the meantime, red is doing really well. Getting more points at the scoreboard and dropping a farmer over here. I was surprised that, honestly, as yellow, I would have liked to see this block. Ooh, that's interesting. Reds actually didn't even go over here. Well, the more you know... Yeah, because he doesn't want to share the field and uh, he can now reattack the field with the other by closing the other city. So now yellow has a nine-point field and red has a six-point field. 
instead of yellow having a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a uh, twenty-four point field, and red having nothing. Yeah, certainly makes sense. This move does not make sense to me. It's kind of protecting yellow's road, but okay. Yeah, and and acknowledging it, I I think I think that like might uh, remind Blue said that he has that nipple. <laughs> Yes, exactly. I, I, I was completely sure like that, that, that he forgot. I'm like, oh, oh, this guy's live. And the reason why I don't like this move is because, well, there's a monastery with a road still, which actually can be used over here. Also, now there's a field connection spot. Let's say if yellow gets desperate, which he might at some point, yellow can just, on his penultimate move, place a meeple over here, drop a farmer, then get a monastery with a road and put it into this protected square, meeple the monastery for six points, get a road back for three points, and sneak in the farm all the way from here. So honestly, now this will be a high variance game with lots of win condition options for both sides. On top of that, this city appears live. So red did a good job thwarting it, at least temporarily, but uh, it's still growing and growing and growing. For example, a mechanism that I see is that if um, red draws the last triple city tile, red can go over here and then get a giraffe snack and put a tile over here. So that's one possible combination. Another one is um, Dorito plus Splitter. No, there's no Splitter. Actually, it's kind of hard. Um, oh, I know. Yeah, Dorito plus City Cap. That should work. Yeah. Actually, no, that doesn't work either. Huh. This city is kind of hard to finish. The only thing that really works is uh, Triple City plus Extender, like this. But the main point that I'm trying to convey is that there's still two tile combinations available for Yellow to finish the city, get this Meeple back, and score a bajillion points on the scoreboard. Yeah, and maybe Shud is considering to join the fields on the left, but or or maybe he's considering to attack the the city again. Oh, interesting! I was not thinking about that. Wow, going for the content move, knowing that there are many <laughs> fields and deciding that he wants to take over this field, and basically say that this field is so big, it's like at least eighteen points. that it doesn't matter that he, red is not going to have any meeples to score things now how does yellow respond because i see a few options yellow could respond in kind and go over here and drop a farmer for a 50 50 to get a monastery yellow could go so go over here and drop a farmer like this and hope for a curve and connect through the outside of a curve I kind of feel that this idea is not bad. Instead, okay, he, just he, simply he decides to create quick points. He creates quick point options, which he only he can use. Yeah. Red did not see a strong move. I think what Red should have done, Red should have placed this tile over here, which would have blocked this square. But this was really hard to spot. In the meantime, uh, yellows. Hmm? Where? Where? Sorry into yellow city that would have been a complete block oh. because there are no vanilla city caps. oh because okay but but now he gets the other tile too it's not a block because there's still one but... triple city so here's the thing yeah now, this oh he blocks himself he does not want a field connection this is interesting i mean so many things could happen what if blusta just goes over here and drops a farmer like some big things needs to start happening. Honestly, I really like the farmer now. Like it's a good, like it's the chance that you're gonna get to get the monastery, get a meeple back. Yellow has good sources of getting meeple back. There's still the starting tile in the deck, unless I'm missing something really, really. No, I think bad. there is one starting tile. Yes, and there's still this opportunity to get a meeple back over here. Uh, oh, that's interesting. 
So should draws an important tile oh, okay. a. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, now Bluster can farm, right? Or, or of course. Yeah, I, I think he has to. Or maybe farm over here at the bottom, hope for a curve or a monastery. Like this. But maybe he just goes for quick points. I I don't think they will do, but uh Yeah, there are a lot of ninja farmer options. Ninja farmer referring to connection through the outside of a curve, for example, like this over here, or where's where are some other options? I don't. I'm not a fan of this move. So he, so he equal. So so he's actually not going to win the field. He he can only equalize the field, and that's the problem. Yeah. And now I, mean, there's, there's still two I, I think remaining, but hmm? I think should should no not that I think should should have blocked that city that uh, Bluster just created, just to prevent him from getting three points. But uh... yeah, that that was not very important in reality. So now the, the field is tied. Uh, but Bluste should have has, the scoreboard. Luste has a big city and a big ruin. And a monastery, actually, yeah. I mean, uh, I, 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 wait, I, th I think yellow's winning. That was maybe like an, an unjustified criticism of yellow over here because I didn't realize just how many points yellow has in his features on the board. Yellow so just has uh, more stuff. Like yellow's taking this down. Uh, thanks for telling me that a craft giraffe yellow is at plus eight at the moment. Self evident was suggesting that Bluesta had a fieldless win. I wasn't sure about that. Yes, and it does seem that even if should gets the critical tile, which he will, yeah. this will be not enough. Yeah, it's too late. So this is just amazing um, game awareness from the Croatian player going for the safer move that equalizes him the field. And then losing the coin flip for the critical tile. But never, never never the less winning the game also i should update the score it's not zero zero it's already one one for those of you who are just joining should won the first game but bluster is now about to win the second one he's suggesting a two minute break which is great for us because um i've done a lot of talking so now the ratings are equalized bluster wins plus five we get to watch a decider match i know that another duel is about to start in six minutes but we have to keep watching this a um i need to stay hydrated i'm going to get myself some hot beverage elias could you entertain our audience in the moment so uh you so feel free to ask any questions Preferably carcass on related to Elias, who will remind you is captain of Team Mexico and Complex V and H on board game arena. I'll be. But then right I have to. I have to go to. Okay, I I do have the the YouTube open. I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the okay. chat is right there. Already, see you in a bit. Yeah, let's see. Okay. Uh. I like to confirm it. Yeah, what what self evident says is true. If if Shu get should get his meeple one turn earlier, he can make the four points, right? 
Uh, oh, I, th I think the game has started. Let me see. Yeah, the game has started. And they I'm gonna put uh, the game on the screen for you. So Luste Luste opened with the four quick points, and Shud is going for the loop um, road. And Luste gets. <clears throat> I don't love when, when you get this style where there's no cap to use it, but uh, Lusta seems to be okay with it because this is not in any danger so far. And it will not be probably because there are no blocking squares. So Blues is now 10 zero in the scoreboard, but now should get some monastery and uh, it's okay. <laughs> and Blues the once again gets this giraffe neck with no cap to put it, but he finds ways to kind of harass this road a little bit. Uh, should will probably go for the Vatican here. And Luste will restrict this road even more. So now he needs two crossroads. Probably should will go for two points plus one for his city. Or two points plus two for his monasteries, I don't know. I think maybe he prefers the city because he wants to do to close his monasteries with a four point road instead. Actually, yeah, I really, I'm so oh. surprised. This is very, very interesting. I've noticed that, yeah, the Japanese players make moves like these too often. So the main idea of this move was just to prevent yellow from getting quick eight points and it's completely works because yellow would have gotten the city cap would have gotten the points over here the downside of this move is that like if yellow draws something like a dorito tile and there are still four regular dorito tiles and a and some splitters remaining then yellow can just simply go over here and secure this city i was considering uh as as red in the previous move to just um to just join the cities because you don't want uh, this small uh, yellow city to block yours. But uh, huh, that, now this is interesting because uh, it kind of blocks shoot city, but it also kind of blocks blues the city. And Shud does not defend his city, he just makes sure that he connects to Yellow City. And Blues does now probably should go over here and make sure that the city doesn't grow and stay at five points. Like, I can't imagine any other move. But let's see yeah, and, and what also, does here. That, that, that would be a, a complete block, right? Of the Red City. There is only one starting tile left. So this is a complete block because it needs two starting tiles. Oh, this is even better. That was my over. Well, sort of, kind of, right? So this it's an upside. Uh, the upside of yellow is that he is not giving red a point. The downside is that red still has a, has a chance to expand this ruin and could score a few points over here. But the important part for Bluesta is does Bluesta do a splitter? and managed to get this city 
for 12 points whereas uh, should is only getting four points and this is the problem with making moves like these and this is why i make them so rare like in the opening of the game there's still so many Taj remaining that all you do is you just delay the inevitable that you know yellow completed this city eventually with the extra point that yellow gained from this tile whereas red lost his meeple as a result of moves like these so uh, blocking worked really well oh sorry about that uh, I don't know if you heard the the siren. Oh, I heard it. Oh, we heard it really well. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. I did. No worries about that. So. Yeah, I, I didn't like what uh, Shu did with the straight line because I thought he he wanted to to make a four point road next to his monasteries, and now he can't do that. Exactly. Well, now he made a good use of this triple city tile so it's now much harder for yellow to finish his city over here um now blusta just keeps harassing and harassing and harassing uh should almost blocked should but should now drop got a triangle and is about to complete his city and also make it harder for yellow to finish his city over here but now yellow will undoubtedly go over here with the meeple of course and it's just such an annoying move because not only yellow with a weak city tile connected to stronger city tiles of red then yellow is also really yeah. bothering these two monasteries and now red needs a crossroads everywhere red needs a crossroads here crossroads here crossroads here like red is down with the scoreboard red is of course compensating the scoreboard by these two monasteries but like overall in the long term this position is just a nightmare to play for red. Yeah, I, I really prefer yellow in this game. And uh But who knows? Maybe if, if Red gets his uh, monastery meeples back, he can take the nine point field and do some stuff. But yeah, it's really hard to be red in this moment. So Red has a bit of a game plan, yeah, kind of, one is, as you said, drawing lots of crossroads. Another one is putting further pressure on this square, although it is really easier said than done. Actually, this is pretty much near impossible. But another one thing that Red, that Red could do is putting pressure on this square okay. instead. And no. blocking this guy. So step one complete, three road points, 18 monastery points, and suddenly Shoot is even ahead on the scoreboard. Still difficult position to play, but a couple more of these crossroad tiles and then we're cooking. Strategic decision for Blusta. Does he go over here and restrict this road further, which is what I would do? Or does he go over here and drop a second farmer, which I think is a little bit impatient. There are some reasons for this. So now should can absolutely ignore the fields and can just try to go super aggressive scoring wood. He has to go over here and has to meeple this monastery, even though this monastery is vulnerable, even though it could be block from this side there are some several reasons why this block why the blocking is harder than it seems and like he just has to go hard if you ask me another option is to go over here and score the monastery this monastery placement i don't like so much actually i don't like it at all because it is blockable in one move it is almost impossible to get his meeple back because red will be forced to find a city tile that fits into this square and it's just yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised about this move, to be honest. So, what, what was your suggestion next to the next to the next to his road? Merging the fields. I, either merging the road over here, oh, okay. or a 4.1 is to merging the fields. Yeah. It looks like Elias, uh, it looks like a should might get away with it, because at least he drew very quickly a road tile that goes over here. Oh. Okay, so red keeps drawing crossroads. Now this is getting interesting. This game could go either way. So Bluestone now will probably block something, but what exactly do you block? Do you go over here and make a 50-50 block over here? Do you go over here and make it harder for red to get his monastery meeple back? That would also be a 50-50 block on this square. Or do you I... go over here and prevent red from expanding his ruin further? I like the the fifty fifty block on the road because you can you also kind of make your field bigger. 
Ooh, I like it because there, there's another curve that can go over here. But instead, he chooses not to block anything and just go score, 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 score. So, sh which is very, very interesting. I probably would have preferred to block here. Like, it's... But let's see if that pays off at all. Because you see, the uh, danger that I see is that, let's say if red gets a crossroads, red gets instantly eight points on the scoreboard, and red has a monastery, and yellow has already committed two meeples on the farm, so red can try and go for a fieldless win. Yeah. I, I think it will happen. Now, sh sh uh, Yellow is very happy that he didn't try to block the monastery because she would have escaped right away. <laughs> and will he just put this cap in his mon uh, against his monastery or will he just take it? Maybe he can do both. Ooh, you're thinking that he could do go like this and just start a new city on the right? I think if I would if I would if I were red, I would just go over here and take the city and simply equalize this ruin over here. Yeah, meeple, meeple. Okay. Mm. <laughs> stingy. Like you have three meeples. That's so stingy. Yeah, I, I think he realizes that blues the blocks a lot. Um so maybe he's like, okay, I'm gonna be a bit conservative and uh but yeah, I, I I think he should have used. I, I would have used the needle there. Yeah, because you see, the problem is like there's still three triple or quadruple cities that go over here, and if yellow draws a quadruple city or something like this, then this rune is already worth eight points. It's worth fighting for as it is. And. Uh... And actually, in some scenarios, Yellow can threaten the completion of that city as well. Yellow's now trying to block this monastery, which, again, I'm super surprised. I would say that blocking this yeah. road is just so much more important. So, okay, so Bluster gets a triple city tile, and let's see... And now Sony should gets... we attack? <laughs> exactly, yeah, so he should now should... Exactly, so now should attack, and now as a result, basically, he's wasting a good tile. So that that's, that's all what just happened, right? And also, he'll be like leaving an empty city cap, which Bluster will take advantage yeah, of. So I, I think he should block from the top. He, mm -hmm. he should, sorry, uh, invade from the top so that the uh, empty cap. Well, no, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe it's better from the left to because that way you don't leave the empty cap hanging around. It's just a subtle decision. Maybe actually I like the invasion from the top because in some scenarios you get a Dorito and a triple city tile over here that gives you three points for the road as red and all oh. these city tiles into your ruin over here. But instead he does neither of us suggesting, okay, this is the one that makes the least sense. Go yeah, for the, the most the, blockable option. Like it has to be a mistake. That's the one I was not looking <laughs> I, I I don't get it. Like these are relatively simple moves. What am I not seeing? But uh, I think what what the what he's thinking is that maybe he wants to close his road with. Uh, so so he's thinking that to block that invasion, uh, Bluesten needs to put something in his road. But no, I don't get it. <laughs> Like, if I were Bluster, I would just do it. I would just call his bluff and say, okay, I'm going to try and block three of your meeples, uh, like two of your meeples. So if... It... Okay, so very interesting prioritization. I don't get this at all. <laughs> I don't get any of that. So like, Bluster had a curve earlier several times, didn't go over here, choose, chose to go over here, kind of putting subtle pressure. Now when there's something important to do, then he goes over here and, to do, and like does a thing that he could have done a, bu a bunch of time ago. So I mean... This sort of works out at the moment because should just drew a tile that would have fit over here, but still this tile fits over here now and probably. Yeah, I I like should's decision. I was considering that because that makes it way harder for the yellow uh, road to get completed. He cannot use the cap with T to close it, and he cannot use the new crossroads to close it. 
Yeah, this is actually a really strong move, and he's saying that there's still a sufficient number of rodents for Red to do something about this. And also, we can remind everybody that Red is still ahead on the scoreboard. Look, Yellow has these nice fields, but um, Red can score a couple of quick points here and there and just have us field this win. Now, if you're the Croatian player, you, you probably want to go over here uh, and just simply expand your road, try to... Get some points. Give yourself additional squares on the field, which is also more important because as beautiful as these fields look, they're, they're kind of running out of squares a little bit. For example, if Shud puts a straight line over here, then suddenly there's no room for a regular city cap at all. Another alternative for Blusta is going over here and kind of preparing the block of this square, but instead he does something different entirely. I can also sort of kind of see that I now should tries to take over this ruin completely or this potential city completely this is super interesting so what do you do if you blust it i guess you just go over here and gets field oh points. do you think maybe maybe now that i see what should is doing i think maybe the idea of of invading from the bottom is to be able to invade to reinvade from the top he he's, was thinking that maybe this city is his way to victory. So by invading from the bottom and from the top, now uh, getting in with one meeple doesn't restrict the other one. Well, yes, but in, if you're going to do that, you still should invade from the top first and then from the bottom. No, but but if he invades from the, from the... Okay, yeah. Yeah, like this move, th there's no way, like, if we put this in a, into an AI <laughs> situation, like, if we put this into some hypothetical AI simulation, there's zero chance this move comes up, comes up on top. Uh, but anyway, so far it seems to be working out, and this square is super sensitive, but it's still not blocked. Well, let's see if Blue Stick does something about it right now. Or he could just go over here and maybe try to do something with his road. Actually, this meeple is probably getting lost any sometime soon, but... Yeah, I, I I think the road is lost now. Uh, I mean, not completely, but it's so hard to to defend. Not sure if it even matters because like this field looks pretty big. Ooh, wow! Oh, interesting. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Now, as Bluste, do you try to save your road or do you just take the three points? <laughs> I think I like saving the road. Although, the problem with saving the road is to restrict the field, but maybe that's not so bad. You can also be super greedy and try to save the road for the for crossroads, pointed to the left. <laughs> Actually, I kind of like that too. No, I mean what what Bluste did made sense. Yeah. Ooh, this is this hurts bad. Should now is about to take over the city completely. This this game is about to get not safe for work. Uh, well, and look at this. Now the Croatian player is sacrificing three points, which may be wise in this situation because he realized just how important the city is, and he does this just so that he can create a blocking platform from here and uh i don't know what tiles are left they can can should they be fed with this tile or or not really i i think there are it's not a good idea to to defend for a triple city right there are not many left there are two left but maybe it's not such a horrible idea i mean four points are four oh. points so i completely understand what yeah. she was doing so Blusta gets a monastery, one, two, three, four, five, okay. six, seven, eight. And there's still a chance to get a meeple back. There's still one more. I think he meaning. he will place his last meeple, maybe. He has because... to. He like he just cannot afford the completion of this city. Like just Yeah, you, you do what you have to do. Because, like, Blusta's doing all right, okay, if he equalizes this thing, he has a monastery, he has a field, has a road, like, he has the points. Actually, let's see, so he's minus 10, uh, these roads, he has extra points in the road, so he's minus 9, because of this, he's minus 13, because of this 5-point road, he's minus 18, field is 18 points, so he's at 0, uh, monastery is 8 points, so he's plus 8, and he's gonna put this tile over here, and he's gonna be... 
because of these extra city tiles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He's gonna bit minus three, but he still ha he still has a chance to get meeples back. Minus four and down two meeples. Not a great position for the Croatian player. Well, but he does get the connection and he should yeah. take it, I think. Yeah, and Shu doesn't get the time to re-attack. Mm -hmm. Now this puts Bluste into a slight lead. Now Bluste is ahead seven points as a result, if I'm not mistaken. Seven points for two meeples. It and if Bluster can get a city cap, he can finish this shared city, get a bunch of meeples back, and also get three points for his big field. Yeah, that, that's definitely what Bluster. Well, ne Bluster's next move should do, be something about the city because uh, if he gets a road, he has to defend the city. If he gets. Are there monasteries? Uh, and there are no monasteries. Yeah, Bluesten needs to prevent shoot from attacking the city, and if he can, to close the city. With that in mind, I, I think maybe shoot can just restrict the bottom side of the city just to. Wow. Okay. And look, played almost instantly. Like, I think Bluster has calculated the remaining tiles. And he now just made sure that should cannot draw a quadruple city tile and, like, expand the city, making sure that it does not get shared. Probably what should could do is just simply merge these two cities, prevent Bluster from getting these additional points. But again, seven point difference. Like, there's. We're running out of tiles, and the Japanese player needs to compensate for that difference somehow. Yeah, I think maybe you have to just take that three-point city now, but I don't know. I, I would be hesitant to do it. Maybe just join the two cities. Maybe just uh, join the cities on the right, and then you can attack. Yes. Oh, so this, blue so tickets. Yeah, Bluster gets a quadruple city tile, and because of this move that should play, Bluster is now not able to place this tile over here. But at the same time, this tile is good for Bluster because this means that Shoot is now not getting this tile. And this looks like quite an important tile. But yeah. Bluster can go over here and still hope for the curve and try to pre pre finish this road. One, two, three, four, are, are five, there, six, are there seven, any eight. tiles? Is there any way that Shoot wins the big city still? I don't think so, but now he gets a curve, which was a hugely important tile for Bluster, like because Bluster now cannot go over here, get a meeple back, cannot cannot go over here, get a meeple back. Yeah, because the, now, now should also gets hmm? three points and 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 he keeps two meeples for his last two turns. Yeah, this is this could be the decisive thing. These three points could have belonged for Bluster. Instead, he spends a move just on getting a, a platform for. Attacking the field and um, Blust is ahead four points, but it looks like it will just not be enough because he can't take many more points really. What there's there's still this move, right? There's still a city cap that's remaining, one regular vanilla city cap. But he needs to draw it like ASAP, and even that might be not enough. Yeah, uh, I, I think as Bluster, maybe you just defend the city on the right right now. I don't know if there are any any attacking tiles left. Maybe I don't this was so. the last one. I think this was like, like there are no Dori... Yeah, there are no Doritos. And there are no uh, triple city tiles. So the idea of like attacking the city from the left is not... Like, I think what he should do is maybe, like, go over here, prevent this road from being taken. Just kind of somehow try block point scoring opportunities for should, if that's at all possible. Uh, 
Uh, maybe you can just, I don't know if it's possible to close this uh, empty cab. Oh, there are two empty cabs, forget it. Yep. <laughs> uh, and also, like, closing no. cabs doesn't really match her because should will have all the two remaining moves. So getting meeples back is not important. Yeah, the, there's... There's a three-point road that may be a four-point road. There's... But there are no, not many things that are more than three points, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is... Everything will be decided by a cap. Should take three points and he wins the game. Because... Well, 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 not necessarily. No, but because should Blusca got three points. Yes, yes, yes. Should can go over here. Again, so like Blust is now at plus one. If Blust goes over here, he can hope for the one, two, yes, for the vanilla cap. And he can hope that Should doesn't draw the vanilla cap. Then he gets three more points. And then. And then maybe Should doesn't have enough. But what's the other remaining tile? Maybe somebody in the chat can let us know. I real don't quick. know. I think it's a straight line. One, two, three, four, five, six, a seven. Straight yes, it's a straight four line is four points. Huh? A straight line is four points right now. Yes. So so maybe you can prevent that right uh, now. No. Oh, yes. The, 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 go over here. And then. No. No, no, he doesn't see it. He ah, oh, he didn't see. He had the win in hand. He had the win in <laughs> hand, and now he's going to lose with the draw. Should is going over here, taking the four points. Blusta takes the city cap, goes over here or here, and then the game ends in a tie. But Blusta loses because he was the starting player, and the win was right there in front of them. Oh, what a heartbreak! Yeah, that's sad. I mean, like in his defense, like we get to sort of solve the end game together discussing these kind of things, but it's it was so close. And also, by the way, Blusta had two chances. He could have blocked this road with this tile as well, like placed it over here. So just shows you how important endgame precision is. By the way, let's also double double check if we even counted the points correctly, but I think we did. I think it should be a draw, and, and then in that case, the Japanese player wins. I'm now going to refresh. Yep. Yep, it should be like that. 21 points for the yeah. field. Beautiful field, but it is a draw, which is a loss for the Croatian player. Yeah, I wow. lost in the in the very last move. Well, uh, that's heartbreaking. And he had fifty six seconds left. Yeah. So the Japanese player should be very happy about that. Yeah. What's a close miss? But this just shows you like the experience of the Japanese player. That's in these critical situations. It's um. Sometimes a small move like this makes all the difference. I'm going to update the score right now. It is two one in favor of the Japanese player. The Croatian player still has chances to qualify and certainly gave a fight. But yeah, sometimes these things happen. In fact, uh, so I played three duels in the Carcassonne Champions League so far, and I won two of these duels due to my opponent's last move mistake. Um. Yeah, so, <laughs> I I also want. Well, I I I won two out of three, and in the first one, I I think I won both games because of last move mistakes. I'm sure I won the second one because of a last move mistake as well. <laughs> well, yes, certainly. I'm 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 happy that just we managed to capture such a moment on camera. By the way, hi, it's Mono. Great to see you first time on the stream. Hi, Johan. Hi, Glavir. 
uh, well, this is the kind of stuff that happens in these streams. So if you like what you're seeing, subscribe to this channel and we will be making at least weekly coverage of all the most dramatic moments on the moments of the Carcassonne Champion League. But we don't have time to dwell on that uh, so much because there's another match we'll be watching between a Song Yu Chin with a screen name uh, Self Evident 2, an extremely strong player from China against another and against a different Japanese player with a screen name EQ. So we're gonna go to that game immediately and then Yeah, uh it's about to finish. I don't know if it's the second game or the first game, but they are four tiles left. They are fifty-three to fifty-two. Uh, the Japanese player has a huge city with two meeples. And the Chinese player has a very big field with three to one meeples. Uh, so I don't know who's winning. <laughs> That's perfect. So uh, Elias, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you make sense of uh, I'm gonna let okay. you make sense of this position. I've put it on the screen. In the meantime, I'm just gonna do some score updates. Okay, uh, here, uh, here I'm surprised by the move by Red. I think he could have just taken a six, a seven point ruin and call it a day. Because, but um, he decided to try to sabotage the blue field. Um, I don't know uh, the real score. It's 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 a bit hard. Let's <coughs> see. Um, so the the city is thirteen. The field is is plus fifteen for red, and I forgot what I said about the city. So I think they are roughly equal, right? Uh. This is an interesting move. For for me, this uh, two-point move means that EQ doesn't think it was possible to close the city, and he was probably right. Both players are neglecting the seven-point uh, ruin. Well, it's five points plus whatever you put into it. Uh, Melvi self evident wants to try to join. No, I thought he would consider uh, trying to get this blue farmer into his field to win three to two instead of three to one, and that would be plus six points. But he goes for the two point move instead. Maybe he figured that this is already enough, that he doesn't need to risk and get six points. He just takes the two safe points, one for the road and one for the monastery, and then he will have um, a meeple to spend it on something else on his last turn. Yep. Uh, I guess he will take the six point win now. Yep. And EQ will take this one, I presume? There, there are four points. No, three points. No, four, four points. Four, four, four. Yeah. At the bottom. Okay. So, hard to evaluate when we just jump in in the very last moment but i think red should be winning by a little bit let's see oh i think red is winning by a lot actually yeah, so this <clears throat> ruin in the middle, it is not that big as it turns out. Certainly no match for this 21-point field in the center. And the Chinese player and the rating favorite. The, one of the highest scoring 
one of the most important players of Team China at the World Team Carcass on Online Championship 2023. Need to remind that China is the reigning world champion in this Team Carcass on Online format. And also regains back his master title just over 700 rating threshold. So the first one goes to Self Evident 2. Yeah, it was the first match, the first game, sorry. Uh, where is he? Yeah, let's look at that queue. Here in his description, he says that he's a yeah. member of Traps, that's a Japanese Carcassonne club with some strong players in it. So I, I think, oh, BGA does this weird thing that if a match is about to start but hasn't started, it kind of disappears. I know. <laughs> oh, we have self-evident here on the stream saying that his opponent does not join in the second game. Well. Maybe they forgot that the format is best of three. Just a reminder to our viewers. So, um, self-evident I'm familiar with. AQ I haven't played many times that I can recall. Let me see. Let's see if we've played against them. Yeah, I've played against him for sure. So he plays Arena a lot and uh, he was lined up quite a few times in the World Team Carcass on Online Championship. Six games only. Wow, oh. that's, that's I'm 3-0 I'm against him. I'm surprised by myself. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I, I think I have a way worse record against him, self evident. Oh, no, I'm 1-0 against self evident. Well, look at that. I'm, I'm undefeated against both of them. <laughs> I know, I know. You're very strong, Elias, but my viewers already <laughs> know that. <laughs> yeah, but I, I didn't. Okay, they started. Self evident is 7 0, which means he closed the initial cap. He also closed the initial road. But don't but discount the Japanese player. Six points for the EQ, for the monastery. Some aggressive scoring from a Chinese player. Instead of t instead of continuing his city, he just pre-builds a four-point road. A strong move. And if EQ, you're gonna meeple this again. I like this. Meeple this again. That was just yeah. Alrighty, we appear to be sort of kind of back. I think. Okay. Oh, okay, it looks like there's something going on at the very least. Yeah, thanks for suggesting the update. Sorry about the technical difficulties. If you've been on my channel long enough, know that sometimes it does happen. Let's see what we missed. Well, self-evident is now six points ahead on the scoreboard. Starts a new city in a way that makes it harder for Blue to continue his city and also pre-builds a long road. Lots of vulnerabilities here for Blue. 
Red finishes in 8-point city. Blue is about to lose a meeple over here. All red needs to draw is like a rotal and then this meeple will be lost. Red has finished an 8-point city, but Red is now debating whether to place a meeple over here and try to take over the city at all. I probably would, just for the sake of creating more threats. I think it's a strong move. But let's see what Red actually chooses to do. We're going to get back Elias in a second, I think. Oh yeah, so Vladimir Chentov is asking why are they playing a tournament game as if why the time format is different. So, uh, reminder that the first match that we watched was with the regular slow time format with each of the players having three minutes and playing on a 45 second increment per turn. Here, there is no increment. Each player has 15 minutes from the start. And uh, they have 15 minutes to complete all their thinking in the entire game so as opposed to an allotted time per move the reason why the time formats are different for different matches it just has to do something with the account settings that different players have on the board game arena so the length of the games will be roughly the same self-evident now 16 points ahead on the scoreboard finish the city over here Now it has a long road. Now again, threatening this city. It's just so hard to be EQ, if you ask me. What do you do? I mean, you might go over here, defend this square. But it's not like it's super worth defending. Because there are only two regular vanilla city caps that fit there anyway. So if you ask me, maybe you just take two points over here, defend it indirectly. Or you go over here and simply try to score seven points for this monastery. This is an extremely risky move and one which I do not like at all. I mean, he defends, but he also pre-builds a three-point roll, but he also makes his meeple so, so vulnerable. Let's see if that works out. It actually might as well might, so maybe Eku's idea is that, let's say if... The, if red draws a crossroads and, play, and scores two points over here, then this meeple will be sort of in the, in the precarious position. But there still are going to be like uh, several more tiles that fit into this square, and blue can always get a meeple back from this later. Blue now expands his field, also gets a little bit of something over here, a couple of extra points. He is now closer to finishing his monastery. Maybe... Blue can even somehow secure the square and get his meeple back. Although, ah, I don't believe there are any tiles remaining over here. So this meeple is completely dead now. Sixteen points ahead on the scoreboard. Now a little bit less players exchange quick points, and EQ does get a second meeple back. So all is actually not that bad, if you ask me. I mean, this blocked meeple is bad, but this farmer has now just expanded. This field has expanded. It is now worth six points. Could be worth a couple extra points over here. If blue gets one of the two remaining vanilla city caps, blue will get ten extra points on the scoreboard and more field points. So. It's a still 
not all clear cut. The main problem is this long road. It is super secure, very hard to attack. It is worth already nine points and there's a healthy chance that Red will be getting his meeple back once they place a crossroads over here. Red also has threats. There's still plenty of Dorito tiles or triple city tiles to put into this square. Red could finish the city and even though like points wise the players are not that far from each other just because red has all these threats it is very hard to be blue here So EQ, starts a new city at the bottom in such a way that makes it slightly harder for Red to finish his city, but Red is unperturbed. Red just decides to start a counter field uh, on the left. So a six point field, but because there are these two empty city caps, it potentially could grow to 12 points or possibly more. EQ gets a meeple back, a much needed meeple back, but self-evident gets a Dorito tall and now this city at the bottom is already worth seven points and it's still possible to complete this so i presume eq has to go over here pretty much instantly without thinking without a meeple that's a good choice with the idea that maybe he wants to draw a city cap and then something else and then block the square completely and leave self-evident with seven meeples stranded the Chinese player secures further this long row, which is now worth 10 points and completely impossible to attack. And this is looks this looks like the road could be the game winning feature. Now, if your EQ still have ideas, and I think a good winning idea is to go over here, meeple the city for six points, make disincentivize self-evident from taking a meeple back, or let's say if self-evident like gets, I don't know. Uh, starting tile and if they choose to go over here then suddenly we as blue can finish this city but instead actually chooses to clean up a city cap and start a new city at the bottom I'm not sure if there's going to be enough time to do that but now self-evident draws a dorito tile that fits into this square and um EQ might consider investing a meeple into sharing this ruin because it's already worth like 10 points. So maybe if we go over here and attack it, we can later on finish this city and this city. But instead, he just leaves it open. And I wonder what that is. Let's count the tiles. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there are still two triple city tiles remaining to connect, which is why I don't fully understand why this move has been played without a meeple. Well, maybe the idea was in fact that if we play this move without a meeple, we can try and attack the city a little bit later, but now the meeple can be used for quick points. And given that EQ is behind, there's a move which I really like. If the Japanese player goes over here with this orientation, no, not this orientation, not like that, and and scores two points, then he'd leave an empty monastery spot for potential nine points. And variance on the board always favors the side which is behind. So I'm really curious why exactly the Japanese player choose to eliminate variance because this is normally what you do when you're winning, which the Japanese player is absolutely not in this position. There might be reasons. We will see them a little bit later.
self-evident starts a new city, which is why Ekyu breaks the new city immediately after. Uh, well, it, it technically, Blue is adding two points to Red City, but with that, Blue is making so much harder to actually complete the city, and the Chinese player has remained without meeples. Not that it should really bother him. Eq now gets a tile which would have connected him to this ruin. Instead, I don't know what they're gonna do. Maybe go over here, add a city point, and they hope to somehow complete the city later. They would need some sort of miracle in order to win. Oh, I like that. So he even drops a farmer knowing that there's still two monastery tiles in play and that he will later be able to connect to this field like this, equalize these farms, and maybe his plan is to finish this city and then maybe score some quick points over here if there is a tile available. And I believe there is a tile available that fits here. So certainly there is a plan for the Japanese player. Now, it's interesting. So with these caps, what do we do? Maybe we try and put them over here and finish this city <clears throat> with one of these two caps. With one more cap. Or we could maybe go over here and hope to finish this city instead because there's one Dorito tile with the road remaining. So he goes for the cap approach, which certainly makes sense. Now self-evident will presumably go over here, putting pressure on this square and putting pressure on this square as well. But this is a precise move because... Actually, no. There are no daggers remaining, so there is no dagger asymmetry. So the better move was to go over here. Because the problem now is that self evident can go here and attack two squares with one move. So that was a slight misstep here by the Japanese player. And I did spill a bit of hot liquid on myself right now. Oh, there's an alternative move, actually. So self-evident instead could go over here and just block this meeple. And I probably prefer that move because there are still tiles that give blue a meeple back. So there's one starting tile, one of these like this. And there's also um, one of those, which is two tiles, which is two tiles too many. Yes, he chooses to do exactly that. And look at this, EQ had a tile in hand that would have given him a meeple back. And now really, EQ can't do that much, although maybe a good move is to go over here and drop a city cap in his field, trying to score some three points extra. Not like... But instead, he chooses to sh finish a shared road and uh, give self-evident a meeple. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised about that move, but maybe Ekyu's idea was to get a meeple back. So let's see how he actually uses that meeple. Maybe here, scoring six points for the field. With the idea to draw the last remaining regular city cap and put it over here and finish this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's still a curve remaining, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. So if um, Ekyu draws a city cap and then a curve and then a starting tile, maybe for, for here, like he could be doing quite well. Yeah, that's been planned. So. Ekyu goes here, drops a farmer, then city cap. No, 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 Then curve, then we connect to the field, and then city cap here, and we drop a farmer. But I'm still not sure if this would be enough points. Probably it wouldn't. 
I, um, okay. Don't quite understand the purpose of that move. Maybe the Japanese player has given up, but, um... Self-evident finishes this gigantic road, gets a meeple back. I presume EQ would need to go over here, take a six-point ruin. And then, with the last tile, which is going to be either a curve or a regular city cap, simply complete the field connection, just get these extra po six points. Certainly a bit unfortunate for Blue that he didn't manage to... <laughs> get a connection tile earlier also very surprising move over here he's trying to connect to this city instead one two three which i'm not sure is possible at all yeah so there are no tiles or are there one two three four five six seven oh yeah okay there's a triple city so, the, yeah, but the, the problem with this move is that it is easily blockable with any of these tiles, right? So what Self-Evident could do now, he could just go over here and neutralize this. And place the meeple over here. And had Self-Evident gotten a curve instead, he could have gone over here with a curve and blocked the square. Because the triple city that is remaining, it is uh, the regular triple city. So then, no matter what red was going to be drawing, this field connection would have been blocked. EQ does draw the curve, which will need to go over here. And as a result of this, I mean, blue is getting something out of it. So blue is getting three points for a meeple, while red is getting one point for a meeple. But it looks like this will not save blue from a sure defeat. So yeah, self-evident is getting ooh, some extra points as a result. Because he now unified all these cities. And look at this huge ruin, one tile off from completion, which is why I was very surprised that EQ did not attack it early when he had the chance. And now this will be not just a win, but a blowout win for the more experienced Chinese player, I would say. Self-evident was very precise here. and um, showed why he managed to make it all the way to the semifinals in the World Championships in Germany earlier in 2023. So plus 23 convincing victory for self-evident is going to be 2-0 and they finished just in time before the next match, our final match for today. This will give me enough time to update the score. Unfortunately, it will be it will give me not enough time to get Elias back on stream. There will be some technical difficulties. I will need to continue this alone, but uh, at least I'm glad that we got to got halfway through with Elias together and I will be having special guests for future stream too. All right, so the next one will be Osnofac from Portugal, currently rated 602, but I would say much stronger than that. Look at this, nearly 15,000 games, more than 10,000 victories behind his belt. This, of course, includes casual and arena games, but really a lot of experience. Also, silver medal at the 2023 Mind Sports Olympiad Grand Prix versus... Sunny369 from Hong Kong, who has already, I think, created the game. Currently rated 566, so not that far behind. Definitely less less than a thousand games uh, behind his belt, so less experience. But this also means that 566 represents much uh, greater progress. Strong Azul rating, by the way. Uh, 
Yeah, so the game has been created. Probably going to be a couple minutes before it actually starts. I see Portuguese people in the chat rooting for Afonso. Anybody who's rooting for Sunny369, do make yourselves known to balance things out. Anybody from Hong Kong today? No, the game has not yet started. Oh, look at this info. Professional board game player. This is certainly formidable. And then there's like all the games that they play. Lots of titles. Most of them are not Carcanson. And honestly, like most of these games, I haven't ever played myself. But I've noticed from Azul and from Scrabble that like, competitive board game experience in Mindsport and Scarious is transferable. Once you play more different games, then you do get better at new games and you learn them quicker. Azul certainly helped me with Carcassonne a lot and vice versa. <laughs> Let's see if it helps Sunny to defeat the rating favorites. Well, what won't help is the fact that the Portuguese player who is playing the Red Meeples, by the way, has the starting player advantage and he immediately gets two points for the road. With the standard Lithuanian opening, uh, Sunny responds quite aggressively with a two-point road of his own. Now he's able to take a three-point city with a shielded tile, a couple of Dorito tiles, and this will turn it to 14-point cities. Still, let's not get our head over ourselves because the Portuguese player starts a three-point monastery. With, that, with this gets the slight opening advantage. Now sticks in a road into Sunny City. Let's see how Sunny responds. So there's certainly... Several legit moves here, which are strategically show different things. One interesting move is to go over here and do the self-invasion. Get a second meeple in and try to build a city like this. Another move is to do the same, but without a meeple and simply try to cautiously build around this square and then either block the square and enjoy a slightly victorious, not slightly victorious, but slightly advantageous mini battle uh, with a block city versus a shorter blocked road, or, you know, try to complete this city. Another approach is to simply go here straight away and like pose the question of completing the city much more acutely. The idea is this, like if he goes over here, he'll be one tile away from finishing his city, so Osna will be forced to attack, maybe like from here, placing a meeple. But this would allow Sunny to go here and here and block two meeples at once. And Sunny goes here for the more direct approach, saying, okay, I have a threat, react to the threat immediately. And this is a not this is not an easy move here for Osno. First of all, with this triple city tile, he has two legal placements. Maybe he can go over here and tie this road. But if he does this, then this square becomes vulnerable and then Sunny could just block Red's monastery and then Red would have two blocked meeples against one meeple of himself. Another move, and this is what I would play. I would reluctantly just close my eyes and go over here with the idea that this move pre-finishes Red's road and it makes it slightly harder to Sunny to complete for Sunny to complete his city because it makes sure that Sunny would now have needed two tiles, two caps to complete his city, which gives Red a bit more time to attack the city. Red goes for the first move. For the first of these two options. Oh no! Red meeples the city instead. Why would you do that? It cannot be correct. Because it's, it's pre-finishing Blue's Road. And starts a city which is sort of kind of decent, but then it is attackable later in the future quite easily. I am not a fan of this move at all. But what's done, what's done. I would be very curious to hear maybe later from Alfonso the reasoning behind this move. Because this wasn't even among the two possible moves 
on my radar. But then, but then again, what do I know? I sometimes I have missed important things earlier in the stream today. Osno here continues his road in directly and starts a new city. Sunny finishes his city is now ten points ahead on the scoreboard. Osno now gets a miraculously beautiful tile. You see three points for the road, one point for the monastery, and also an indirect continuation of his own city. And suddenly this city at the top is looking not that bad. And honestly, I quite like the position of red, even though red is 10 points behind on the scoreboard. Like, these little pieces, plus this monastery, adds up significantly. Yeah, I've heard about Xiang Chi, uh, but never played it. So Chinese chess, you're saying that everybody plays that. Well, that Sunny three six nine played that. I'm, I'm not sure if it's just called Chinese chess or if it's any similar to chess at all. If it's remotely similar to chess, then. Probably that experience would help with Carcassonne, because like you have, I mean, I do ch I do play chess myself, and it has played Carcassonne in the sense that it gets you spatial vision, spatial like like basically that you can imagine things in space. This helps with Carcassonne as well. Sunny starts a new city over here. Osno starts a new monastery, disconnected from his monastery over here, but at the same time pre-finishing his road which doesn't really work because Sunny quite fortunately draws just the right tile to cut this road make sure that Osno gets only five points and not nine whereas uh, Sunny gets four points for the road himself still the Portuguese player is in a great position even though these two monasteries are disconnected they're still good monasteries now he goes for aggressive scoring. Instead of securing his city over here, he opens another city whilst adding one monastery point to the scoreboard. Hopes to draw a monastery over here and maybe a couple of monasteries over here to build a little Vatican and just run away with the game. Sunny's now thinking quite a lot about this move. I'm not sure exactly what they should do, but I know that there are two opposing school of thoughts. One would be kind of more aggressive scoring, just placing it over here, trying to add potential two points for the city. Another one, whoa, which I really like, yes, is trying to go over here. And Meeple a three-point road, because Meeple road is good, but at the same time setting up a trap. Hoping to get another Dorito and block Red's road over here, a Red City over here. A third move, which is sort of okay, but is not that strong, is to immediately go over here and try to block this Meeple on this square with the idea that there are only two tiles remaining that would fit into the square and that Blue could draw a straight line or like a, one of these guys to maybe score three points and at the same time um, block the square. But there's some problems with this move. Instead, Sunny goes for this move, which uh, I think is honestly just a mistake. So the idea is, of course, his idea was to start a blocking attack on this city. But whilst he started blocking attack on the city, he also subjected this meeple of his 
to be controlled by this monastery meeple of Osno. So Osno now has no incentive to finish his monastery because he's happy to have his monastery meeple trapped for six points while Sonny's going to have fewer points for his city. But now the situation slightly changed because Sonny drew a shielded city tile and very wisely used it to now, si to now tie two of Osno's meeples to one meeple of his. Because now, the only thing that Sonny needs to do is draw a Dorito tile and put it over here and just wait. And the, the idea is this. If Osno puts a city tile over here in, in an attempt to finish his monastery, then immediately Sonny can draw a tile over here and finish a 12-point city. Same here from the other side. If Osno... Uh, if um, Osno wants to place something over here in order to get his road meeple back, then suddenly Sonny can go over here and finish a city. So there was there'll be no incentive for Osno to try and like place a tile into any of these two squares, but this is perfectly fine for Sonny because he can just stay put. He's gonna have like five or four points for the city over here. And uh, Red is going to have two meeples blocked. Now, this is all, of course, for later. Red now drops a farmer to equalize Blue's farmer. Sunny gets a regular city cap, which I think goes over here with a farmer. At least this is what I would play. An alternative is uh, actually to go over here and start a new city. Yes, always farmer. That's... Uh, Certainly good idea to open up the position, just utilize the meeple advantage. Now this tile goes over here. I don't think there's a better move to be played. Both sides are roughly equal on the scoreboard. Osna with the monasteries, but Sunny with the meeple advantage. And like the strategic idea for Blue here is to build as big a field as possible just to maximize the impact of that meeple advantage. Good to see that after our technical difficulties, our viewership numbers are back. So just a reminder, if you like what you see, then do make sure to meeple the like button so that more and more players find out about the Carcassonne Champions League. And of course, if you want to view this more than once, then subscribe to this channel. Sonny here is thinking, so what are some alternatives to this move? Now, this is kind of theory. This is a well-known pattern, so this is clearly best. Um, what are some alternatives? Maybe starting a new city over here. No, 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 over here. Yes, over here is better because it kind of puts some pressure on this square, on this square a little bit, and uh, maybe there's a tiny chance how we could block this farmer for three points which would put like a complete ironclad on this field. So that's that's great that the Hong Kong player does in fact find the best move. Osno immediately goes over here without a self-invasion, just tries to basically use the splitter tile as a Dorito tile. And the idea here is to place a triple city, triple city Dorito. So with this building pattern, it kind of makes sure that Red can continue his city, pose a decent threat of completing it, and at the same time not allow Blue an easy opportunity for reinvasion. This is an excellent tile for Blue. If you ask me, it probably goes over here with a Monastery Meeple. An alternative is to go over here and score three points. I guess there's idea of going here and scoring a Monastery Meeple, but this will be quite vulnerable. This move is good. So now this is a six point monastery meeple. It will make sure that this farmer comes into the field with tempo. Osno draws a monastery and immediately places it stacking next to his monastery and controlling Blue's monastery at the same time. So I think Blue's idea here will be try and put pressure on this sensitive square. So maybe if you're Blue, it's not the worst idea to go over right here and start a new city. And given that both of the road monasteries are out, 
this square is actually much, much easier to block. And this is exactly what he does. Osno does not draw a defense tile, just uses this tile to score three quick points. And there we go, Sunny now gets a blocking tile, which honestly I would use here. I would go over here, over here, and make sure that nothing fits into that square. But maybe there's an even more elaborate way to block. Like he could just finish his city. And uh, well, this is better, this is better. So very nice sequence here by the uh, player from Hong Kong. So, uh, Fultzu now places the straight line over here, which is a strong move. It puts some pressure on this square. It puts a little bit pressure on this square, actually, which is also important. And it's also surprisingly significantly restricts the field. Okay, there is like this one green square. But if red finds one more straight line, the impact of these two farmers might suddenly be strongly reduced. Yeah, hi Joao. Oh yes, thanks for mentioning in the chat, Elias, that there's going to be another stream tonight on the channel of... Uh, the American streamer Vamos Cosmos, that's not YouTube, that's somewhere else. Uh, yes, they will be streaming the evening match featuring the 2017 world champion Thomas Preuss, and that will be at 1900 UTC. But if you are tired for con if you're hungry for even more carcass on content, I kind of forgot to mention that I'm having another stream today. Last time I had issues with my voice and I couldn't finish my viewer game analysis stream that I held last Sunday. So this Sunday we're finishing it. We're having um, at 4 p.m. today, which is like literally two hours from now. Basically, there's, there's going to be this match is going to finish. I'm going to have a short break and we're going to have a viewer game analysis stream for more Carcassonne on, on Sunday. But let's just focus on this for now. Lots of interesting things. So Sunny finished his city, expanded his field, now starts a new city and faces a choice. A false here with this powerful move attack two squares at the same time. If he gets something like a Dorito tall, he can put it over here and make sure that this monastery meeple doesn't see the light of day and then this city is restricted. And so as Sunny, you're certainly tempted to go over here to save the city and at the same time can it make it harder for this square to be blocked sort of restricting it from this side on the other hand it's of course very tempting to take four points and to clean off the city cap but sunny makes the wiser choice he was unable to save his monastery because a red got a blocking tile Normally, of course, there would be two road monitors that fit into the square, but both of them have been used here and here. So this square is now will be empty forever and all these meeples will not come back into play. This shouldn't really worry the Hong Kong player because I'd say that this tile that he just drew almost gave him a decisive advantage. He has the long-term meeple advantage and he has the advantage on the scoreboard and he already has a majority on the field which these monasteries will not sufficiently compensate. So, what do we do if you're red strategically? I think if you read the way how you come back into this game is going here, here, and here and just really betting everything on this city but in the meantime players just exchange quick points sunny took three points over here osno took three points over here and sunny now draws a tile which osno really would have liked but on the other hand it's not like sunny has a use for this tile himself Maybe he, he could go over here and clean off the city cap. But given that this city cap is potentially on his field, he doesn't really have a good reason for cleaning it up. So the one move that I do see 
is maybe placing this tile over here and putting some pressure on this square. This is also legit, trying to make it a bit harder for red to connect to the field. And if he makes sure that he blocks the square, this will make sure that the two meeples of blue have free reign over the big field for the rest of the game, which should be enough in most cases for blue to secure the victory unless red successfully finishes this city. Well, 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 this is very, very interesting. So Sunny now drew a Dorito tile and blocked the square. So nothing now fits into this square. And Osno at the same time drew a uh, triple city tile, which frees up his road. So, <coughs> a lot of dust here. What does this mean? This means that Sunny is now unlikely to finish his city. And Afonso, if he wants to win this game, he could actually have a bunch of other win conditions. Let's say if this city idea doesn't work out. He could place a tile over here, get his people back, and then somehow try to win this field with a 3-2 to two majority. Now, this field doesn't have a lot of connection spots, but maybe if he goes over here, drops a farmer, then connects, then... Actually, yeah, it's kind of hard now that I think about it. Maybe a Dorito here and a field connection here. Wow, this field is really impenetrable. I mean, th there are some outside chances, like, for example, with back-to-back -back curves over here. One could sneak in from the top. Or we could use the method that Sergei Zaharenko does, uh, the uh, captain of Team Ukraine, this play with a screen name Zaharik. Sort of his approach is, like, to spend more moves on field connections, Maybe go over here, and then when this field connection is completely secure, then we go over here, drop a farmer, and connect like this. The downside of this approach is that it takes a lot of time. The upside is that if this approach, if you can pull off the sequence, uh, sequence then it's an almost sure win because of the unblockability of this square. But we can see that the Portuguese player chooses to do none of that. He, in fact, simply wants to win a fieldless win, it seems to me, and just tries to restrict his opponent's cities. And he's successful almost. So there's now only one tile that fits into this square because two of the three daggers that go into the square are already on the board. And if Afonso manages to draw the first one, then this people will be deceased. The biggest problem for the Portuguese player here is the scoreboard, scoreboard, scoreboard. Like, if not for these 10 points, then these monastery meeples would have probably been enough. Now, what could Sunny do? Sunny could start a new road. Let me think about it. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. One curve remaining, but there's still some daggers. So I would probably go over here and merge the two fields at the expense of three points just to make sure that I still have this like strong grasp on the field. And then um, if I get this meeple back, which I still could do with uh, crossroads, yeah, then I think I'm doing pretty well. And he does exactly that. Now, for Afonso, it's a really big dilemma. So he could either start a new city over here, clean off the city cap, or he could go over here and just say, no, look, it's like it's now or never. Either I'm going to finish it or not. The problem with a move like this is that it's blockable in one move because all of the triple cities were the road and all of the road Doritos are out. So let's say if Red were to place this tile over here, then with a single straight line, Sunny can go over here and kill Afonso's dreams in this game. Which is why 
the Portuguese player wisely chose the second prioritization. His idea is to finish this city and drop a farmer, perhaps. Now, it seems that he has kind of forgotten about this city, who he's now just gets an extra monastery point, and maybe hopes to gets a crossroads and score three points for the road and one point for the monastery. Sunny now with a bit of a dilemma. There are a couple things that, that they could do. Maybe just go over here and make it harder for Afonso to continue the city. Maybe just go over here to take an extra city point. But I guess probably they should go over here. Just to prevent Afonso from finishing the city too easily. In fact, now that I think of, of it, this move is an absolute must. Because there are still city caps in the deck. And you just don't let your opponent finish 8 point cities this easily. Still 1 minute and 40 seconds on the clock, so all options should be considered. Carcassonne Ukraine is, I sp says, I spied this tactic of entering the field from Jubjic. So uh, this is referring to the thing that I was talking about earlier with kind of building up, sort of engineering the connection first and only then dropping a farmer. By the way, the strength of, of Sunny's move uh, by picking a road over here is that it makes these kind of ideas impossible. Oh yes, and Jubjic, uh, that's the screen name of... Um, I think Yaroslav Jubzitsky, but like a, a, an important player uh, in the Ukrainian national carcass on team. Okay, so Sunny now uh, attempts to further restrict or possibly even block Osno's city. But Osno now has another threat. He now continues his city over here, and this city is absolutely live, if I'm not mistaken. It can be completed with the following sequence one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, it's kind of hard. It goes triple city, triple city, city cap. So it's a sequence of three tar that is needed to complete the city because all 10 Doritos are already on the board. Which is why I think this move by Sunny was a considerable tactical mistake uh, by turning this tile like this because there's still city caps in the deck which can be used by Afonso to finish his city, except that he just didn't draw them. Sunny drew the city cap. And now has a choice between going over here and neutralizing the city. Or just simply going over here and scoring 7 points. Or going over here and scoring 4 points. But then why score 4 points if you can sc score 7? The reason why this would be 7 points is of course the fact that this is 4 points for the city and 3 points in the future for the field which is controlled with these two meeples. The Portuguese player does not get a city cap, he gets a monastery, which I guess he could meeple, but honestly I really don't see what reds could do in this game other than drawing the two triple city tiles and the city cap and trying to complete the city. Sunny draws a city cap, and Afonso doesn't. And then of course he can afford the luxury of dropping farmers like this, and also making it harder for Red to complete his city. And now draws another city cap, which Afonso of course could have used, and uh, now it starts looking very, very one-sided. Well, Afonso can't really do much, except for maybe scoring some points over here. And then maybe merging this farmer. But if you ask me, the best course of action for the Portuguese player is to just make a couple of moves, save some brain cells, and uh, start psychologically coping with a defeat and preparing for the second game.
It does seem that he's thinking, and I think his idea is he just wants to make the best move, which I honestly respect. Actually, I think I know what the best move is. Why don't we go over here and pre-finish this city, given that there's still one of the giraffes, giraffes next room? remaining then we could get the giraffe snack drop a farmer actually no we can go here meeple the farm straight away hope for the giraffes next on the next move and then we can get something else later Instead, he just takes the six points for the city, which are there readily available, which honestly makes sense. However, this allows Sunny to take a six-point road. Oh, look at that. My plan would have worked. Who, who knew? I did. So maybe Osno not finding the most precise sequence, but certainly one could not blame him. Yeah, actually, this is a lot point sacrifice, but because look at this. This six point city move is actually a zero point move because it, it gave six points for red, but three points for this farmer, this blue farmer, and three points for this blue farmer. So yellow gained six points and lost six points and also opened up the six point road for blue. So this turns out this was actually a losing move, which costs yellow like a bajillion points. Wait, 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 let's see if this was game decisive, actually. So let me think about this. So, with the move that I suggested, yellow would have a blue... Not, not yellow, red would have how many points extra? One, two, three, five, six, seven. So this is extra nine. Uh, extra six for this field compensated by this field so this is yeah so extra nine points and also fewer points and three extra points because this row would have been impossible for blue so red could have had 12 points more had they heeded the streamers advice not enough to win but still certainly a move that was worth playing. Well, anyway, it does seem that this game was very, very hard for Reds. Both players agreeing to a three minute break. Yeah, this 24 point field is just too much and you have to give it to Sunny. Yeah, like at the end, they did draw a lot of city caps, which made life harder for Afonso. But the whole strategic idea of blocking these two monasteries and then merging the two fields, so taking a short term three-point sacrifice just to have a stronger grasp on this field and then again blocking this farmer by from red which is also a short-term point sacrifice just to increase blue's strategic prospect of you know getting field 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 control and the way blue build up squares in the fields kind of opened it up put city caps in that was a really strong performance by the Hong Kong player. So, so far, it turns out that experience in Chinese chess does help. <laughs> yes, I, I appreciate my viewers picking up my Freudian slips. I mean, what can I do? But also you have to give it to me. Like, I think I managed to sustain myself through months without confusing meeple colors. Like, it's a step in the right direction. Yes, 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 I see I'm being further roasted. So, are the players any closer to starting their second game? No, there aren't. 
which means that I have time to boil myself some hot liquid. Be right back. We are back, and I'm going to assume that the game has started. It has. So both players just made a couple of moves. Sunny took four points for a small city. Oh, no, so it was... Yeah, then Afonso must have gone over here. I'm taking two points for the roads. Yeah, then Sunny's trying to connect to this road. And then Afonso claimed a new city. So this is the sequence. Afonso now needs to find an ambitious move. Yes, and go over here. Aggressively scoring. This is how we try and win games. Now one tile away from getting 10 points for the city. Sunny could probably go over here, but he's still going to have like three tiles that fit into the square. That's why in the opening, these sort of riskily looking moves are... This is the time when they're the most powerful. Because all kinds of tiles are still in the deck. Yes, of course, the player from Hong Kong is doing the thing that they must do. How does Osno respond? This is a very interesting move. Ah, this, so he kind of indirectly protects this city and at the same time prepares to meeple this road when he finishes it. Sunny takes two points for a road next to his monastery. I rather like that. Oh, and the tile has been discarded. The quadruple city tile has just been discarded. And this is great news for Afonso because this means that he won't have the disadvantage of being the second player anymore. Well, here's the idea. There are, 71, there are 72 tiles in Carcassonne. Uh, including the starting tiles. So which means that they're, that they're actually 71 playable tiles, which and that's an odd number. So the starting player gets an extra tile to play. But now, because one start, one tile has been discarded, both players are going to have the same number of tiles to play. 
35 tiles each. So Afonso now knows that the number of tiles that Sunny is getting just went down from 36 to 35. A small win, but it is important. Alfonso started a new city. Sunny has to go over here. Or he could also go over here and start to ring road, but securing this square, the road connection plus the monastery, it is just more important. I can't recommend hot water enough. It helps the voice so much. Oh wait, there's another move. <laughs> What if he, like, really enjoys roads? He can go over here and place a second meeple. Honestly, this is not bad at all. Because this secures the square completely. This gives blue a good use for the six remaining curves. This, this. And it also puts pressure on this square. I like it. Go here. Content. Let's go. I mean, there are some downsides to this move. And to this move even more. But I guess getting a loop is certainly quite attractive. And this will work out for Sunny. Actually, look at this. You go over here, you meeple this, and you're just happy. Or meeple the field. This also works. Actually, meeple the field is very better. That's an amazing sequence by the uh, Hong Kong player, which I have to admit I didn't see it first. Afonso finishes his city, gets on the scoreboard. He's going to have six points and meeple a new city cap. Sunny can probably either pre-finish his road and secure this square a little bit, or he can go over here and try put some pressure on this square. I guess I prefer this move slightly. This seems to be a bit too committal earlier on in the sense that if you fail to block this square, then like if you go over here, you're sort of giving your opponent a three-point road for free. And I really don't like giving away my opponent's free stuff. I'm both greedy and stingy in Carcassonne. And certainly there is some time to think between there's something worth thinking about a third move to consider is going over here trying to like restrict this city it's not a good move but it's sometimes played even at a reasonably high level So he goes for the city block, and Afonso says, you know what, I don't need to finish the city, it can wait. Instead, he starts a new city with the intention of placing a curve over here and trying to block this square. The reason why this is so important is the fact that all of the three dagger tiles that could fit into this square are already on the board which means that none are remaining in the deck, which means that this square is unusually vulnerable. Sunny starts a monastery in an excellent spot. Osno gets his city up top, and this was precisely with the problem with the move that I was saying. Now Osno is able to take advantage of this three-point road. This is why I'm not a huge fan of blocking moves. Because they don't work very often. I guess, but when they do work, you sort of look like a genius. Uh, 
Uh, isn't it saying that if red block if blue blocks red city, there is no point in saving this square? But there is point in saving this square because it's actually quite hard for blue to block the city. Especially if red manages to successfully place something over here, then the only way blue will be able to approach is going from here and from here. Or, for example, blue could go over here and then red immediately draws a defense. Or, you know, there's still three tiles remaining. Like, red could draw a tile really, really soon that fits into this square. Sunny now has this triple city tile, which I'm pretty sure goes here for so many reasons. We need to prevent ourselves from getting blocked and we need to put pressure on this square. An alternative, I guess, is going here and starting a new city. And honestly, there's even a chance of like finishing it. Well, okay. Okay. That is interesting. I can't say I quite understand why Sunny chose this placement instead of this placement. I guess we'll see in a second. Well, now of course this tile will go over here and this square will be blocked. And this sort of kind of works out for Sunny, except that he will have one fewer point than he otherwise would have. Because like if this tile is here, and he has the same tile over here, then this square next to the monastery is filled as opposed to being empty. Let's see if one point at the end of the game makes the difference. Osno gets a fantastic tile that can get him a uh, road meeple back. Maybe like somewhere like this. Yeah, 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 exact. With the road pointing downwards just to restrict the city. And suddenly like this meeple looks kind of silly. It's a six point field with, with no squares for development. So Sunny, as soon as possible, needs to put something over here to maybe merge these two fields or at least get some sort of curve to get a couple of extra squares for development. Because if it doesn't happen, then Osno probably wins due to his meeple advantage and the advantage on, on his scoreboard. Of course... If uh, Afonso wins, this is sort of good for Carcassonne because then the score will be tied and we get to watch one more game. Yeah, I kind of need to update the score as well, just to reflect the fact that this is the second game. Sunny won the first one, we're watching this, the second game, and this is the best of three. Sunny chose to just dump the tile. Actually, it's not just dumping. It's just making sure that Red, if he wants to connect to his, to his field, he needs to go over here. Uh, he needs to go through this route as opposed to this route. And going for this route will make sure that Sunny gets a free monastery point. Something like that. Red starts a new city with a shielded tile. And uh, what does blue do here? Well, first of all, I know what the commentator does here. Uh, I know what Alexi does. Alexi takes the time and the opportunity to show how important free squares are on fields. This is a divider, which is an excellent tile to drop on a field in an attempt to give himself more city caps. But because of this... But because of this one square over here, blue is now forced to do it in a suboptimal manner, in a way that leaves only one extra city piece in his field as opposed to two extra city pieces. Because there was no place where to put this tile, except for this square. And even now it's kind of vulnerable, so Afonso could kind of go here and then try to build around this square and block this meeple completely which would be completely devastating for blue. Another alternative that he could do is he could go over here and maybe try to block this monastery 
and still preserve chances of sneaking into this field from the outside. Instead, red places the curve over here, which I also like. It puts additional threat, a slight additional threat, but, but an additional threat still to this city. And it does so in such a way that keeps this field small because it makes sure that this square that just appeared above is taken away. And Red proceeded with his plan, except for the fact that Sunny immediately drew a tile that gave him a meeple back and indirectly prolonged his road. And now this guy enjoys a nine point field and with that a slight advantage. I kind of already start preferring Sunny in this position. So the play with the Red Meeple decided to switch strategies. He's saying, never mind fields. I'm going to give you additional squares. I'm just trying to take over the road. I'm going to get a curve, a curve, a road end, and I'm going to have 11 additional points on my scoreboard and a meeple back. Now what Sunny could do, he could say YOLO and go over here, pre-build an empty city, hoping to get a city cap and like 10 points for the city. This is what something might, one might do if they're desperate, but he's not desperate. I think a better move is to maybe just go over here, start a new city, and then hope to draw something like a city cap with a crossroads so that you can go over here and connect to this road like this, equalize the roads and enjoy not a nine, but a 12 point field. And with that, probably a victory in this game. A long time is taken by the player from Hong Kong. Still one minute and 20 seconds to think. However, I need to remind you that the way time format works is that any loss on time, if you go below zero, it's an automatic loss of the game, according to the tournament rules. So you can't be thinking for too long Honestly, I don't even see any other candidate moves. Like, maybe starting a second field, going over here, but it's early for that. Ooh, you could go here as well. And then Meeple a city cap here. That's also kind of interesting. Afonso could go here, try and build a rhombus-shaped city, given that there's still five Dorito tiles remaining. And there's like a 70 something percent chance to draw at least two out of five tiles. And there's also the splitter, so it's two out of six. So it's like almost guaranteed to finish the city. And this is exactly what he does. Sunny now gets a fantastic tile. It's really good. He could do so many things with it. He could go over here, uh, trying to make sure that Alfonso doesn't get this meeple back anytime soon. He could go here as well. Yeah, that's also a decent move, putting additional pressure on this square. But he could have also gone over here trying to break down this city. If you're Afonso, you could simply go over here trying to finish the city, which I think is premature given how many Dorito Tals are remaining. You could go here and equalize the city and place your last meeple, and this is, and this is not a horrible move. You could go here and meeple the city cap and stick in a road into this city, making it harder for Sunny to for Sunny to get a meeple back and to expand his field. You could go here, connecting these two roads and preparing to take over a bigger road. So there's lots of options, and uh, Alfonso chooses the one which is like more blocky, more direct confrontation. The kind of thing which is more fun to watch. And he will now try to he will now be trying to block the square, leaving this guy with one meeple stranded. 
He gets a meeple back immediately, makes this square even more sensitive. He now needs to put something on top. Sunny does not draw a defense. However, he does draw a nice tile that goes over here and pre-finishes this monastery. He could also place this tile over here to prevent red from co connecting to this field. But then what does this field really matter considering that, that it is only worth six points? I can tell you why it matters. It's because if red continues this city, it's going to be nine points. And if red takes over this road, then it's going to be 12 points because of this little city piece that will be merged with the field. Which is why Sunny decides to block this farmer's access. I'm going to say quite wisely. Osno gets a Dorito tile and continues his rhombus-shaped city. He's one tile away from completing it. There's still four Doritos remaining, so very likely that this is going to work. Sunny is getting a monastery, but it's hard to do something with that monastery. He kind of like builds around this square, trying to restrict it further, but there's not that much value in it. Alfonso could get his meeple back, or he could score some quick points here, or he could go over here and put pressure on this square. Given that there's still one triple city with a road remaining that would go over here, I probably prefer taking the immediate points if you're Alfonso. Instead he, <laughs> Instead, he decides to block, but now immediately Sunny draws that tile. And actually, I'm surprised about this move. Maybe this city could have waited, because if I'm uh, if I'm a false, I'm like really concerned about this. Twelve points, twelve point field is, is going to be, if blue draws a city cap. There are not many city caps remaining just by the looks of it. There is still one dagger. There are still all three city caps with the crossroads. There is still one starting tile and there are still two vanillas. This is what I see. Actually, that's a lot. That's like a quarter of the deck. That's really a lot. So this thing is dangerous. Despite the 34 points on the scoreboard for, for Osno, Sunny absolutely has a way back into this game. He has the meeples. Oh no, it's Af Afonso is the one who has the meeples. So uh, yeah, okay, life is harder for Blue. Maybe go here, just get an extra point. And then at some point as Blue, you can kind of hope for a triangle tile that would get you back a monitor meeple, then you place a road here, block that guy, and then use your extra meeple to do something good. LR is saying this could be time to meeple a new field in the upper left. Could be actually. Sort of uh there's some nice pieces here. Like if you meeple over here and blue continues the city, then you take the city cap. There's a nine point field at the top. It's certainly still a wet position, one where having more meeples helps. But I think, ooh, there's a strong move that I see. There's a really strong move that I see. Okay, if you're a phone to, why don't we go over here? It's a bit of an unusual move. And we drop a farmer like this with the idea that if we get a straight line then this city is completely blocked because there are no daggers left well at least no left-handed daggers then we have two left two city caps left on our field to take advantage of where we can score seven points over here seven points over here and have a nine point field and the worst case scenario if our opponent gets a city cap and continues then we get to actually connect into the bigger field. And Afonso finds it. I'm really impressed. Amazing find by the Portuguese player. It looks like just really the final nail. Now it will be hard to come back. Although I see one option. 
there's a pattern in Carcassonne when there's dagger asymmetry. Okay, so dagger asymmetry is when there's not the same number of left-handed dagger tiles remaining in the deck as there are right-hand dagger tiles. There's zero left-hand dagger tiles remaining, and there's one right-handed right -handed dagger tiles remaining in the deck. So there's still a chance for Blue to change the orientation of the dagger tiles that he needs if he draws a Dorito tile, places it over here, and then suddenly this type of dagger will be suitable for him to complete the city. And then he'll be able to place it over here, enjoy his 12-point field in peace, and at the same time kind of use this triangle tile to shield himself away from this farmer, then get a meeple back, score some quick points, and then re-attack that field from the bottom. But this is everything that I just said is not possible on this move. It might be possible on this move. Or it might be possible on the next move. Sunny can't go here because this was blocked this square. Alfonso now gets an extender. Which might want him go here, I guess, start a new city, and then do something about that square later. If he goes here, I guess he could try to connect to the city, but that's his last meeple, so not such a great idea. I'm actually not a fan of this move if I'm sunny at all. Because it looks like it restricts your opponent's field, but that's a bad idea. Because as Sunny, we want to keep this field open so that we can reconnect to it in the future. Because our plan is, as Blue, to finish this city, at least hope that we can do this. Well, now it's not possible, but it, it was our plan, right? And then we want to get this Meeple back and have many spots from where we, we can regain this field. No, none of that is going to work. Sunny uses this tile as a blocking tile. And now Alfonso can just relax, I think. Ooh, strong, strong move by the Portuguese player. Wait, or is it? Yeah? He sort of blocks his own road? I don't get it. It's like, there were still outs. Oh, he could get this tile and place it over here and then get a curve and enjoy a huge road maybe his idea given that he's ahead he was trying to preserve the dis uh, to prevent the disaster scenario the disaster scenario being where blue draws the tile to connect in this square but then separates from this guy over here I'm still a little bit surprised. One of the reasons why I'm surprised is because there's still the three triple city, uh, triple crossroad tiles with a city. Kind of looks like a flower or a mushroom when I'm drawing it. Or an anthropomorphized umbrella that's dancing. I like the latter interpretation. But anyway, I was trying to draw a triple ci uh, city cap with a crossroad. And this tile would have gone over here. And then this guy would get a meeple back. But it seems that Afonso just wants to close down the position, make sure that there are no big features remaining, and so that um, he can keep racking up quick points. So this city cap and scoring four points was kind of important, really important. And cruise his way to victory that way. Sunny's probably going to go over here, take two points, leave an empty city cap pointing somewhere. Or go over here, take two points. He 
He's now probably recounting the daggers. There's a psychological thing, you know. The first reaction to loss is denial. So when I get blocked like this, I like to recheck all the dagger tiles. Oh, am I really blocked? But what if I miscounted them earlier? Or if I'm playing in person, what if somebody accidentally mixed in an extra dagger tile in the deck? But no. No, this meeple, irretrievably lost and not coming back. Because look at this, this dagger tile, this dagger tile, this dagger tile, they have been used. So the sooner Blue comes to term with the loss of this meeple, the better. Not that it will help him win the game, although it might. Maybe there is a way how he could score a lot of quick points. For example, if he draws a really large number of city caps, that could work. Yeah, so look at this. Maybe he hasn't come to terms fully. Like, he's taking two points in a way that's sort of defending the square. And uh, I think he knows, I think he knows, either deep down or actually, that this square is not getting filled. Well, he's getting this four extra points. Osno just keeps restricting the field further, just like strangling this little guy, which still is there with nine points. Well, I presume Sunny will now go over here. Ooh, Joao was making an excellent point. <laughs> that when it sort of doesn't matter when you take the two points, you do it in a way that like, it seems that you're defending the square. And so your opponent might either think that, sort of your opponent might panic and think, oh, did I count correctly? Did I block correctly? What if there is still a tile in this deck? Or your opponent might think that you are not counting correctly and get complacent and then you got him. I kind of like, there's still a lot of this human to human psychological things in Carcassonne and very often they work. Sunny is now risking and I like it because they're behind so they should do it. But unfortunately, this is just not the tile that will do it for the player from Hong Kong. No meeples means no quick points. He's forced to place this tile on an empty square. Afonso is now trying to block his last meeple. And it seems to me that Sunny should defend, given that there are still two tiles that give him a meeple back, and both of them are such tiles that would fit together with this one. I see one of these guys still remaining in the deck, and one of these guys still remaining in the deck. So this move over here is kind of a no-brainer. And he does it. Alfonso just keeps trying to block. Now Sunny has a difficult decision. Do you go over here and give yourself and slightly restrict the square but make sure that there's at least one or exactly one tile remaining that fits over here? Or do you leave the square open, leaving yourself two tiles that can complete you the city? but you give your opponent a chance to block you completely with a city tile. This is a moment which could take like a really, really long time to calculate. In order to make the correct decision, you have to know all the five remaining tiles in the deck. I see that there's a Dorito, there's a Monastery, there is a starting tile, there is a triple crossroads with a city cap and there's something else
Maybe one of the road tiles. I think it's a curve. Oh no, no curve. Hmm. I'm too slow at this. Wait, are they blocky tiles? But there's a Dorito, no? Oh no, there are no Doritos, never mind. Yeah, it, it, so, okay, Alfonso is now blocked, so makes, okay, there was a straight line, yeah. Alfonso uh, now makes it sure that there's only one tile that fits into this square as opposed to two, which is a reduction of probabilities. And in order to get a meeple back, Sunny should have drawn a tile right now. Alfonso get the seven points from one of the two tiles that could have fit Sunny. And he's gonna get both of them because Sunny just draws a straight line. Can't do much. Actually, he can. He can go over here, yeah, exactly, and block a four point road. But Osna will just take a four point city at the bottom. And win the second game, which means... I'm just going to update the score straight away. Because I'm too excited to see the fact that both our first match of the day and the last match of the day will come to a decider game. Osno is suggesting three minute break for coffee. I guess the, the game chat is covered by my face. But um, I'm surprised. It's kind of late for coffee. It should be now 1500 or 1512 in Portugal. Maybe it's not too late. So let's see what the point difference is. Not that great, actually. Only plus 14. Which means that Sunny sort of kind of had a chance with his last ditch effort. Had he gotten a meeple earlier, like gotten a few quick points, and maybe on the last move, if he meeples at 8 point monastery, good things can happen, could have happened for him. Honestly, I think I might have underestimated how close this game was. And this is probably because we often forget monastery points. Here was the six point monastery. Here was a seven point monastery. So both winning mini battles against small cities. No really big features, but blue had something going with features scattered across the board. I was saying there's no specific time for coffee in Portugal that noted by the way also like is it true that in cafes or like drive throughs coffee costs like 50 cents or super cheap because here in the UK it's like three euros minimum well three pounds minimum uh, pretty much anywhere you go and when one of my friends, one of my Latvian friends who lives in Portugal told me this. I was shocked to the point that I did not want to believe. Like, envy started flushing through my veins. Well, anyway. Oh, now it's like 70 or 80 cents. Oh, that's how horrible. That's still amazing. <laughs> Okay, in some places it's for 50. That's, um, you have to treasure that. Treasure that. You just need to wake up every morning and have a sip of that 50 cent coffee and look at the ocean, which you have access to. 
play a game of Carcassonne and just experience a lot of positive emotion. I hope that y'all are doing that. Okay, we need to update. Start refreshing the page. Did they start playing? Oh, that was quick. So now Afonso with a starting player advantage, playing the Red Meeples, now just cracked 600 back. Uh, slight psychological rating advantage. He will have the starting player advantage for the rest of the game. Sunny starts a new city for two points. Osno starts a new city at the bottom and Sunny immediately draws the first monastery and places it in a position where it controls a red city. A false immediate draws a monastery back and pre-builds a three-point road quite wisely. Sunny will probably take it like this with three points or like this indirectly which honestly is also not such a bad idea. This probably is a little bit stronger with the road end pointing up because it makes it harder for Afonso to draw a second monastery and stack them. So then let's say if um, blue goes here and red draws a monastery, red will now not be able to put it into this square. Red will be forced to go over here and stack. And this is precisely the move that the player from Hong Kong chooses to make. Also gets on the scoreboard. And nicely secures this square, kind of indirectly pre-building really a five-point road going through the city. Like this is what's most likely to happen, but it's such an interesting tile that Afonso just drew. And he chooses to put it into his own city, which I rather like. And now his plan is to go here, 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 here. Like this is what's going to happen. At least this is what he will attempt to have happen. This is not an easy tile to play for Sunny, and he chooses an interesting approach, which maybe I wouldn't have. His idea is now to try and build around over here, but I certainly, I think this move warranted more patience, because it's just such a good tile that I would have liked to place it here instead. Put some pressure on this city, and maybe just try to run away with 8 points like this. But uh, the player from Hong Kong chooses... A more direct approach and they should probably continue with that maybe like go over here make it harder for red to attack the city from the side and at the same time they would be making this square vulnerable and preparing to block it from this side so certainly the move that is warranted in this position is like this this is exactly what they do nice find here by the play with the blue meeples and Afonso responds by completing a four-point road. So now Sunny has a variety of options. We could just go here. Yeah, that's sort of the natural move. An alternative is to go here and like block the city. But probably as blue, you want to finish your own city first and only then attack further. But as blue, there's something even better. I think you can go one square above. And kind of at the same time pre-build this, but also protect this square, but also attack this square. I mean, this move is also okay. I just felt the other thing was like a little bit stronger. Now, a Sunny, you probably go here, put inflict pain on this square. You might also go here as well, trying to simply block your monastery t with two meeples of your opponent. And he does that. I really like it. Now, what does Osno do? This is super interesting. He draws the last starting tiles earlier on, and he decides that, you know what? It's time to protect the city, even if it makes it attackable from this side. Of course, meepling this road in anticipation is also a strong move. If a tile 
is placed here then red's road will have six points on it and i think the thing that red is planning he wants to draw a dorito with a road and he's gonna play it place it over here facing it like this and putting the curve over here and then he hopes to draw a curve blocking this square at the same time blocking this meeple but freeing up his road so this is the Portuguese player's sinister plan, I guarantee that. And so what Sonny wants to do, he probably wants to grab a regular curve at some point and place it over here, cutting down this road so that the only available tile that can be placed into this square is one that splits the road and secures the four points from this side for the play with the red meeples. So it's certainly a race to whoever's going to draw something nice here. Sunny is now getting a split Spirito tile to start a new city somewhere. He's thinking where exactly that's going to be. But going back to this critical situation, I'm very curious to see when blue draws another curve, what blue is going to do with it. Or red for, for that matter. So blue has the threat of going over here, right? And kind of doing the thing with cutting the road and so on. So in order to prevent that, Osno could get a curve and put it over here, trying to prevent Blue from getting a curve and so on and so on. Afonso gets quick points at the expense of security of his meeple. This could cost him actually. So if you're Sunny, you either go here, attacking the square, or you just go here, starting a new road, which I really like, and then asking a direct question about the survivability of this meeple. The reason why this move is so much more dangerous than it normally would have been is the fact that all the four starting players, starting tiles are out. So this meeple is only two tiles away, here and here, from getting blocked completely. Here we're going to see what are the blue player's priorities. Oh, that was actually a nice suggestion from y'all is that this tube divider would have been better here. Ah, oh, I think this is a miss here by Sunny kind of attacking his own city and it's just um, a bit of a less efficient blocking attempt here but it's kind of hard to spot because one of the most difficult things to do in Carcassonne is to adjust your general strategy that you know to the actual run out of the tiles because if the actual run out of the tiles is skewed then sometimes the strategy that you know goes out the window because the game is very different without these tiles in play than it is with these tiles in play. There are certainly many more blocking opportunities and the probabilities for each of the blocking approaches change. So even though normally this would be a decent move, now starting a two-point road over here, especially with so many roads that's available, would have been much stronger. And look at this, somehow Zafonso is getting away with this city. Like, how did that ha How did that happen? If he finishes this city, he doesn't care about this meeple one bit. That's just a win. Okay, Sunny now gets a curve. Now he has his one chance to go here and here only. Ah, but this is also good. He is continuing uh giving himself my monastery points and giving himself an attacking platform and look at this just in time just in time he gave himself time to prevent a disaster because red finishing this city would have just been so bad for blue quick points go for Alfonso 15 points on the scoreboard Sunny gets a straight line not really good use to it except maybe going over here that is a good use to it. Kind of uh, trying to put some pressure on this square. 
could also go here and put some pressure on this square, but it is weaker for a variety of reasons. So the player with the blue meeples chooses the strongest move. Osno continues his city at the top. Sunny gets a city cap. Where does it go? Interestingly, could go here, could go here. I certainly like it on the left to put pressure on this square and create a blocking threat. I know that maybe Sunny is tempted to go over here and block this monastery, but blocking this monastery is not necessary because this square might get blocked anyway. Osno doesn't get a defense. So this meeple is still up in the air, but Sunny doesn't get a block at all either. But finally now he can go over here, pre-finish the city, and will be he'll be pretty close to drawing the last um, tile that goes over here. Taking four points for the roads and taking f and finishing the city. So certainly a fantastic tile draw for the player from Hong Kong. But now, of course, Afonso can do the thing. Oh, he doesn't do it. I wonder. Instead, he goes for a blocking approach. And Sonny has pretty much only one option. Like, you have to complete blocking here. Pretty much non-negotiable. Or you could go over here and try flip through this tile that goes into this square. It seems to me that blocking is more important. And this is exactly what Sunny decides. Osno continues blocking attacks on the left, also playing very, very quickly, trying to put some time pressure on the player from Hong Kong. Interesting decision for Sunny, like not many good uses for this straight line. Can we go here and start a new road, like to do something? Because like we can't really go here and attack the city because we want to block the square. I guess we could go here and like draw something like this, block this square, then get to curve, free up this meeple, kill this meeple, something like this. I guess we'll just wait and see. Yeah, this is probably the strongest move that one could have found. So now, Alfonso just finishes his city, chooses not to attack the city over here, although that was an option. Sunny has a couple of strong moves. He could certainly go over here and block the monastery. Honestly, not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, you should probably do that. An alternative is to go over here and start a new city and pre-build the completion of the city by a Dorito. This is a common pattern of use of a splitter. This is interesting. I'm not a fan of that move at all. The reason for that is because there's still tiles that... There's still two tiles that fit here. Maybe I'm being a bit unfair. But the reason why I don't like this move is because the sequencing is a bit off. Like, you don't want Red to get this meeple back. Because then Red probably wins. And, like, this blo blocking is important. Especially, like, there are five curves remaining. I know that it might seem scary, leaving yourself only two tiles to complete the city, but you gotta be patient. Because... Reds still 
can block your city. Like, there's still the idea of red getting this thing that we talked about earlier, placing it like this, and then finding a curve, and then placing it like this, and even dropping a farmer. And then all you've done is just wasted a beautiful tile for one point, pretty much for nothing. And look at this, and Afonso just knows what to do, right? It's just beautiful. He makes it much harder to block this monastery, but Sunny is getting a second chance. Should he block this monastery? Yes, yes, he should. And he even gets to start a new city. Decides against that, decides that he needs meeples for other things. So this sequence turned out all right, except that it's a bit... Um, how would I say? A bit of an in inefficient use of tiles, if you ask me. Red makes it harder for Sunny to complete his city. Still not impossible, still one tile remaining to fit into this square. I presume that we're going to see one of two things. Either Sunny is going to complete his monastery, or he could go over here and flip for this tile. Kind of set up the completion of the city. And honestly, given that he's a bit behind on the scoreboard, given that Red has a monastery here, I like that move. You might even, like, if you even drop a farmer, then you probably win this game if you get this tile. Because it's just so high impact. City... Uh, what a four-point road, field, and so on. He does not do it just yet. Simply finishes a monastery. Osno does not start a new city over here, which surprises me. And also, he does not go over here. He does not want to try and block this meeple. I see why he... Oh, I see why he does not want to do that. Because there's zero tiles that left here. I think I missed one of the daggers. No, I didn't. I'm hallucinating a little bit. No, 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 there's still one tile that left into this square, right? Am I wrong? I don't think I'm wrong. So this means that Red should probably try and block it. I'm also a bit surprised about the time management. So I certainly see that the Portuguese player has recognized that uh, Sonny is thinking for quite a long time every move and he just wants to put pressure and pressure and pressure and hope that his opponent makes a mistake. But Maybe sometimes doing a bit of a recount is uh, a good idea. Now, certainly a bit of a dilemma for the Portuguese player. He could go here trying to break the city, or he could go maybe here trying to also break the city. He could take three points over here, but the downside of this move, or the upside, depending on who you ask, could be the fact that it's setting up an opportunity for somebody to attack the city from below like this. Yeah, Nallerheim is saying just a waste of a turn by Osno fact. Yes, absolutely. Like this tile, what's wrong with placing it over here? It's really strong. Or you know, like taking the city was not bad. By the way, I think it's an imprecision here from Sunny. Like for for a variety of reasons, it was correct to meeple this city not here, but here, placing the city cap up top, making sure that Red has fewer attacking opportunities. And for example, if Red goes here right now, this is only because of the yes, exactly. This is only because of this piece of road. So with this placement, Sunny himself just cost eight points. Because had he f sequenced it a bit more thoughtfully, had they put this tile over here, then uh, with this tile they would just get their eight points. But still, an equal game, and maybe the city won't matter that much. The thing that will matter most is, of course, this, like how this situation is going to be resolved. 
Will red be able to block this meeple with the sequence that I showed earlier? Or will blue draw the city cap with the crossroads earlier? I like putting graphics, so I'm going to do that. Sonny's thinking here. He could start a new city somewhere, but now that I look up, uh, we're kind of running out of city caps. Okay, Red is about to miraculously finish this monastery somehow. This monastery looked so blocked, so blocked. Okay. Now with Sonny, you have a choice. You could go here, score some quick points, or you could go here and YOLO again. It is, of course, unfortunate to spend the tile like this on a setup, but might be what's warranted. Oh, and of course, no, that would be unfortunate because, no, 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 we need a curve exactly because a curve would bring in this city into this field. This is what we want. So with this move, we probably need to take three quick points. But where exactly? I think here is best. Just putting a little bit of pressure here. Uh, or here is also okay. Because this will allow some re-attack. So uh, blue chooses the former, which I quite like. And Osno now, I think, has to go over here because that's a complete block. Right? Not a complete block. This is a Sophie's Choice block. This would make sure that um, Sunny would need the same dagger in two places. Yeah, this is exactly what he does. Something that was very, very preventable for a long time. But it is what it is. What does Sunny do now? Not the easiest tile to play. You could go over here, I guess, but there is a problem that there's still crossroads remaining. So if you start putting pressure on this square, all you're doing is you're giving your opponent more points. When they eventually draw the crossroads, they're going to go over here and score four points for the road. Yeah, and there we go. The sequence that we were talking about for like 20 moves has been completed, this meeple has been deceased, and so the critical tile is the critical tile no longer. Alfonso managed to achieve objectives without even drawing it. And Sunny would have gotten it! Sunny would have totally won the game! He might win the game still, because the city was pretty good. But here, certainly a big, big concession. Not only did he lose the chances of completing the city, he also lost nine potential field points and eight road points. Eight road points because um, he would have gotten eight extra uh, four road points and these four road points, well, okay, these three red, red points would not have belonged to red. So a huge, huge impact tile. I think very often players neglect these 50-50 opportunities as too risky. But the truth is, like, if you have a 50-50 opportunity that is just so high impact, you need to go for it. Because this basically puts 50% of the game in your bag, and then you have still chances to win the game through other means. 
So if you find a like risky opportunity for 50% where you rely on one tile, but it's super high impact, this means that your winning chances significantly exceed 50% because you could either win the coin flip um, from the tile and win big, or you could not win the coin flip for the tile, but like squeeze out the win elsewhere. But anyway, what's lost is lost. There's still carcass on to be played. The fate of this game is still unclear. There is another coin flip, by the way. So if Sunny draws the tile that goes over here, it's also some good points for him. He now tries to further restrict this square. Uh, Oz now tries to break Sunny City. Sunny will presumably go over here or over here. Possibly even meepling the city cap, although I don't think so, given that the number of remaining city caps is so low. This is where utmost precision in need is needed. Calculating all the remaining tiles, making sure that we continue this city in a way which gives back the fewest blocking opportunities to our opponent. Sunny chooses this route and meeples the city cap. Decide that there's enough city caps to take advantage of this opportunity. Now a difficult tile to play. Where does he go? Does he maybe go over here? Actually, this might be correct move given the remaining tiles. It's a bit too long to explain. But basically, there's very few big tiles remaining. And there are few road tiles remaining. Let's just see what the play with the blue meeples, well, or with no meeples, does at the moment. I guess if he really, really needs a meeple back, one could consider not placing a tile over here at all. The thing that we need to check is whether the potential two extra points from adding the tile over here would even matter for the outcome of the game. And I kind of have a feeling that they would. Okay, so now, oh, so thanks for checking this. So there's only one city cap remaining. Sunny can only finish one of the castles. And I guess the idea of taking this castle was like just depriving points from Osno? But then is that even a good idea? Because this is something that you do only when you're massively ahead. So then if Sunny can only finish one of the castles, then all you do is just add this tile over here. Get the extra point. Or maybe there's a way to sabotage some features somehow. Let's see. Well, this is what you get with time management. Maybe spending a bit less time on the previous moves would have helped Blue to have counted the time the time caps? The city caps, a bit more precisely. Add the extra points and Alfonso wins the coin flip for the dagger tile. Does this mean they also wins the game? We don't know. Or do we? 12 seconds on the clock remaining for the player from Hong Kong. Does he know the tile? Does he know the points? This could matter. I kind of have a feeling that this tile was all she wrote, but let's see. Plus eight for the uh, player with, the, with no meeples, right? This cancels out. Five points over here. This cancels out, so that's plus 13. Six points for the field, that's plus 19. This cancels out. This thing over here is seven points, so that's plus 12. And this is 16, so this is minus four. So this tile was essential for Sunny to win. And there's probably nothing that one can do. They get an extra point. So it's only plus three now. 
Now a bit of a misstep from misstep from Oz. No, I think instead of taking three points, it was better to take four points over here. But it's not that it's going to match her because he's about six points ahead at the moment, and we're just watching the final moments of this match for the sake of watching them. Oh, is Sunny at, at plus five? Which feature did I miss? Oh, I missed the city. Never mind, I missed this. Okay, now now we're talking, now we're talking. Uh, my apologies, like this stream has gone on for too long because I forgot about this thing. So, but still, like Sunny's at plus two after this. Um, so, Afonso can do just anything. Maybe just go over here and leave this empty. Or just meeple it. Yeah, just meeple it. Like, it's, it's a lot of points. Actually, you have to meeple something. Because there's a road monastery in the game. Ah, no, never mind, never mind. No, no, yes, yes, do mind, do mind. Because if you, if uh, blue draws the monastery with the road, blue can go over here and score two points. Blue would be given one point to red, but blue would be getting one extra castle in his field for, for three extra points. So it is important to meeple something and become at plus two. Oh yes, I think the remaining tiles are a regular Dorito and a Monastery of the Road, right? If I'm not mistaken. So if we go here, we as red are at plus two. Yeah, and then and then that's it. Like all Sonicas do is it get one point over here, and then we just win with plus one. This six-point field here, interestingly, is inaccessible completely. Wait. Did we witness, like, did we witness another loss on the penultimate tile? Is that another miscount? What is happening today? <laughs> what is happening in this league? This is crazy. This is a loss. Like, Osno equalized this. Maybe he miscounted, thought that there was a city cap remaining. And now Sunny gets an extra point and wins plus one. And even without an extra point, it doesn't matter, right? Because um, Osno was the first player. Did we... What did we just see? This is crazy! Poor Afonso! And what an ex machina for the player from Hong Kong! But look at this, the psychological move. Because Sunny made the mistake of meepling this city cap, Afonso maybe thought that his opponent has counted right and assumed that there were city caps remaining. So it was like a triple self bluff, a double triple bluff that worked in the favor of player with the blue meeples. This is like some next level carcassonne. Oh. 
Yeah, there we go. The six point farmer catapulted him to 66 points. Very low point win. Wow. Alfonso saying miscounted points. Counting points is not the issue. Like, you still make a four point move instead of a two point move. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's an, um, a way to throw a match. But uh, this time will. This one will take some time getting over. By the way, you vote. Which one was the was the more high breaking? Blue Stavos versus Should or Osno versus Sunny? Both penultimate move mistakes and um Wow. Carcassonne is ain't easy. <laughs> also, like I feel bad for enjoying this. Okay, Sunny, Sunny is here in the chat. That was a gift. Oh, yes, it was. Okay, okay. Whilst you're still here, Sunny, when you meepled the last city cap over here, right? Did you know that there was only one city cap remaining? And did you meeple it simply so that Osno doesn't take accidental four points? And also, was it by any chance that you're trying to trick your opponent into thinking that there are more city caps remaining than they are. I have to know. Oh yeah, Afonso is also in the chat. Uh, okay, so feel like this one was harder. Anyway, well, for, for those of you who are joining just only recently, you have to go to the archive of a stream and then rewatch like the first duel where we had a very similar last move drama in the decisive game between Shud and Bluste. And then you tell me. Oof. Uh, yeah, this is something else. I'm just going to leave this final position for a couple of minutes and... Um, This is how I like spending my Sundays. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us for the for this coverage. A tumultuous coverage, both for <laughs> streamers and for players, of the third round of the Carcassonne Champions League, which has gathered 48 of world's strongest players. Also, hopefully it makes you all feel better that even the world's strongest players sometimes throw games, sometimes throw matches, and um, happens to happens to the best of us. Ah, okay. So Sunny is saying that you put, that you tracked the uh, tiles incorrectly. Ah, okay. So you didn't. So you didn't count precisely, but you knew about the dagger. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. Whew. So let's see what this brings us. Like group A, so we didn't witness a group A match. The player with screen name lawyer from Ukraine currently enjoying his superiority over the rest of the field. Group B, I'm currently doing pretty well. Also, I, I won three out of three matches. And in two of these matches, by the way, my opponent threw the game at the very last move, so I'm super happy about that. I'll take it. This happens a lot <laughs> in this stream. Uh, not in this stream, but in this championship. Uh, then, group three, uh, Nalaheim's quite confidently on top. And we see that Should will be now leapfrogging over the rest of the field to the second place. Loish in second, Bluste in third with a dramatic loss today and then Irving G and Lycos will have a much harder time qualifying. Group D, we didn't witness a Group D match today. Here the situation is uh, a lot tighter and we might witness these players at some point. 
Group 4, Group E, we also didn't witness, witness today, although we recently saw a Viv match, who currently is on 3 out of 3. Let's see if uh, the Hungarian player with the screen name Zikrid approaches him by winning this week's match. Group F. Now, that was the one which we just watched, and this is super interesting. Okay, so, so Sonny here just got his first victory, which will be super helpful, and maybe even this puts him over here in third? Well, I, I guess that Matt and like all these guys will have a time to play their match today. Osno still on two wins, and kind of defending, uh, depending on how these uh, players will play, will either remain in second or drop down a little bit. And of course, Vladimir Kovalev just... Not cruising over the field, because I think he's on 3 out of 4, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Group four, Group G, the Lithuanian Batal Albatov, is predictably, confidently above everyone else, with... Oh, the Chinese player Mitao Cat is not doing that well. Also looks like a very, very tough group. Hopefully we'll be witness a Group G match at some point. Group H. Um... So we witnessed the self-evident versus EQ match. Self-evident must have two wins. Now we'll be in first place. But then, of course, I think we don't have the outcome of this match yet. Oh, we have updates. Okay, that was very nice of you. So we even have all the results. Yeah, self-evident now in first as a result of the win that we witnessed earlier today. And in these games, okay, Osno still second, but yeah, Sunny in fourth, at uh, Sunny in fourth at least, and already as a result of this win in contention. So, if Sunny qualifies, like if you qualify after this, you have to I don't know, like get a tattoo of a dagger or something like this, because it was that, it was that tile, it was uh, that moment. <laughs> Yeah, and in third one, should is in second as a result of dramatic win earlier today. Already, who's playing today? Ah, we've just done with our mega stream. I think you know what? I'm not gonna do viewer games analysis today because it's just too much talking. It was a really, um, really long stream, and uh, I'll see y'all. In a couple of days for more carcass on champions league contest that but we'll finish that game analysis stream at some point but at some point enough talking is enough talking <laughs> okay <laughs> then uh you can watch on vamos cosmos channel the match from my group from group b where uh if you want to learn something from the 2017 world champion with Thomas Preuss with sweet screen name UI Scooty, you can do that. And there's another match which you can just watch on Board Game Arena between the Mexican Lichita Killer and Josef Tihon with the screen name Zikrid of Hungary. Four hours stream. Yes, I did not expect that, but... Thank y'all for sticking around for so long. Before I uh, wrap it up, let me just, at least update the score. Where Sunny gets the win. Yes, 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 I see your message in, in the chat. Tile, tile tracking is important. But not just tile tracking. I really think it was... Okay, I, I know what you said, it's tile tracking, but like I really want to think it was like some sort of three-dimensional chess or three-dimensional carcasson. Me pulling a city cap to make your opponent think that there's a city cap. Like, that's, a, that's a much more beautiful story. I'm going with that one.
yeah, that's going to be it then. See you all in a couple of days. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm going to see you soon.